Hey guys, welcome back to the Batar Project. I uh, got a few boys here that I went to school with. You want to introduce yourself, guys? Go first. Um, Rory Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be an epic uh, episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be very, very good. <laughs> oh, okay. hey, I'm John Manol. Mr. Teen Mums, eh? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Teen Mum. God, we didn't really talk at school. Like, I hang out with Brody a lot. Yeah, yeah. But you, were you in the same group when we were at school? I was in, I was in, yeah, I was in the, for year 10, I was in the boys class for that whole, that yeah. whole group. And then a lot of them left and I went on to year 11 and 12 and yeah, I was hanging out with, uh, I was hanging out with you by the end just of it. Yeah, senior, senior, right, him. he graduated because of me. I used to, yeah. to, I used to have to go to his house, wake him up <laughs> and take him to school. I'm not joking, for both year 11 and 12, every yeah. day. Yeah. Because he would, otherwise he would just sleep and not go to school. He's got HSC because of me. Yeah, I didn't know, school wasn't my. Did you get an ATAR or? Uh, yeah, but it wasn't very high. Yeah, I didn't no. even get an ATAR. No, it wasn't very high <laughs> at all. I don't, I, maybe I didn't even get an ATAR, I'm not even sure. Honestly, ATARs are pretty useless because even when like when I went to uni and that, which I'll probably talk about later, yeah. um, I had an ATAR of like 72% and they're like, you need to have like above like high 90s and all sorts of stuff. So it doesn't matter what, unless you're like a top, top, top student, you got to still find the back ways into, your, into, into anything that requires an ATAR anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And once you finish school, that ATAR doesn't mean shit anyway. It hasn't worked for me at all. No. Not not at all. I've had a I've had a really good job and I didn't even need an ATAR no. at all. I mean, what was that other thing they tried to sell to us? Year ten one, Rosa. I think it was called. No, that was yeah. That's attendance. The year that's just one? how long. It's just attendance. Yeah, it's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's attendance. So how was year eleven and twelve at Plumpton? Ah, uh, was, yeah, right. was. How many boys dropped out in year ten? Oh, all of them, pretty really? much. All of them except uh, I was hanging out with Cameron for a bit. He didn't, he didn't drop out. But like Dean, uh, what are the, all the other boys like Daniel and Justin, Justin Ty, they all dropped. Oh, out. Ju- they all dropped out too. Oh yeah. Who did you hang out with at school? Um, so from seven to like nine, mm. it was like Brody, Justin, oh, all those yeah. boys, and then I started hanging out with all the Islanders and the Footy boys. Oh okay. Yeah. And then I left in year ten to go to Patricia Brothers. Yeah. I, I, thought it was like, well, I don't remember you in the year 11 and 12. Nah. So I was, like, I was like trying to figure out when you actually left. Yeah, because no, you, I don't think, yeah, I remember seeing you around, but I just. Because yeah. everyone really thought you dropped out, that's what. No, no, not, you're 9 and 10 because we were wagging school back in those days. Yeah. And my parents, like, you have two choices here um, change schools or you stop playing footy. So I was like, all right. Wow, well, okay. Change schools. <laughs> so I may as well go to a school for footy. So I went to Did you ever play against like Jack Woodhouse and all that stuff like that? I played with Jack Woodhouse played, okay, growing yeah, up. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was good mates with them in primary school in like yeah. year seven and eight, and then they kind of split off in their yeah, own direction. Left, I think year 10, I think. Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. But yeah, crazy times. Yeah. I can't even remember back then, man. Like, nah. it's so. I can't believe we graduated. What? What are we going on? Well, 2014, I graduated. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah, so it was, that's insane. It was funny too because we start. We actually started wagging in our senior years as well. Where we were, like, you, you did so blatantly that you would just sit in like the quad, and your teacher would look out the window, and yell out to you, so you just look at your teacher and go, "Now I'm not going to class." Yeah. We'd sit out in the lunch in the lunch room and look through our window and like wave at the teacher and go, "But we're watching. We're in class. Yeah. We're just outside, you know, doing our own thing." I remember wagging year nine and ten. We used to jump that back fence and go to the baseball fields oh, yeah. and that. Well, do you have you seen it now? Uh, there's start? all apartments in that. Oh, no, townhouses. No, the way, the, way the school's set up now. It's oh, it's like a prison. So, no, it's like a so, prison. <laughs> no, but the front gate. So, in order to enter the school, besides when it's open, when students are entering and leaving during the certain times, they have a two gate pilot section. Yeah. So they open a gate. It's all automatic. They open a gate. You walk in. It locks oh, you in. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like the it's like a square square setup. So it opens, <laughs> one gate opens, the other one's closed, and it closes. And what the one hell? Camera, <laughs> cameras on. You have to you have to tell them who you are. You got to show your ID. And all Serious? That. Yeah. yeah. And that, so they can write it all down. And then they let you into the school. And I'm like, I'm just sitting there. And I'm like. This is that sort of prison. Did something yeah. happen for them to put that? Yeah, the new principal. The new principal, because he he came from a private school. He even tried to enforce the the whole shoot the, the black, black shoe. Black oh really? And apparently, yeah. because he because he didn't try to our year group. Because he he's like, there's no point. We'll see. We'll see yeah. this. He's like, there's no. no hope in changing you changing you. But apparently, he got they're so strict there now. From what because my nephew went there for a little bit, and he's like. He's like you. You get you get so much trouble just for not wearing the right shirt or something. Wow. Wow. When we used to go, <laughs> oh, no one cared for. Yeah, I went in thongs one time. I was just. I just want to find some time. That's right. The old principal was it, Mr. Ezzy or something? Was that his name? Oh, he was deputy, deputy and then yeah. Jemison left, and then oh. Ezzy came in. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who went to Plumpton would know that this was 
Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's hope they watch this podcast. Oh, bro. <laughs> I miss Viscontini. <laughs> good times, man. Good times. <laughs> so I guess every story has a beginning. Who wants to start? What was the upbringing like? Um, I'll go. So mine was all right. Um, my, a lot of my family was from the eastern suburbs. I think when my mum had me, we moved out to Greystains. Yep. Then moved out further west. Um, started going to Hasselgrove. Yes. Yeah, like year four, year I think. Four, Before that, I can't remember. And that's where I met Brody. I met oh, so Brody. you guys went yeah, to primary school? Yeah, like, what, 14, 16 years? Yeah. Something like that. Slowly over those years, I started getting more and more out west. And then, um, yeah, no, my upbringing was all right. I was into sports. I did AFL, did soccer. Yep. Um, I'm pretty heavy into the gym now, just keeping fit. Not so yep. much complete bodybuilding, but like just keeping fit, trying to be healthy. Yeah. Because bodybuilding's not like you do some crazy things to your body. You, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, up until uh, around, am I talking about my whole life story at this moment? Yeah. Pretty much? <laughs> yeah. Well, everything was, you know, up until I'm about 21, I'm just living the normal life of an 18, a yeah. teenager, going out partying, doing all that stuff. And then obviously I had my daughter when I was 21. So my ex, Georgina, fell pregnant at tw- when I was 20 and she was, I think, 17 or 18. Okay. So... How long were you guys dating for? Uh, I think three years. So I was like, yeah, I was 20 and she, she had just, she was 18 when she was pregnant and then yep. she gave birth when she was 19 and then I was 21. So I was pretty intense. To that give. would have been scary, eh? Yeah, well, I moved my whole life and moved to Cronulla at that point. Oh, really? I'd, I'd like pretty much just like focused on work, moved my whole life to Cronulla and... Yeah, we were living right on the beach. It was all right, but me and Georgina just weren't getting along. Yeah. That was the hardest thing about a relationship and trying to make it work with a baby is that you want to be together for the baby. Yeah. And it never works. Are you polar opposites or? Oh, we're complete opposites. Yeah. Yeah. If you watch the show, like it's, you just see it, we just don't get along. Mm. She's She was all about like at one point going out and I wasn't. I wasn't yeah. for that. You know, obviously I've grown up a little bit and learned a lot of things, but... At that point, we were just toxic to each other. Mm. It was terrible. So, yeah. So now, um, yeah, Evie's three. Yeah. What's know. it like being a dad? Yeah, it's Now, it's just chill out. Like, she's the best child ever. Yeah. Yeah. At, 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 in the beginning, it's hard. But even then, she was still a good kid. But now, I've went through a fair bit. And I've landed up back on my mum's because of this whole COVID stuff. Yep. Um, so my mum's there. Evie gets to see her, her nan all the time. I've got uh, three brothers and sisters. So, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty easy when you've got yeah. a whole bunch of family around. Yeah. And Evie is such a good kid. Mm. You know, you just take on more responsibility and you start to love someone more than you love yourself. Yeah. So. Is it so it's split like she's with her mum one week and then with you the next? Yeah, it's like every second weekend I get her. Sometimes it's only I'll, on the weekend. Only on the weekend. Sometimes it'll overlap depending on what we're doing and if I'm working. At one point last year, I was working so much that I was never home. I was yep. traveling to Melbourne, traveling to Brisbane. I was working six to seven days a week, 70 hours sometimes. Yep. We were in a renewable in, uh, industry and yep. it was just picking off. So you just have to. It was picking up so well. You have to work 70, 60 so hours. So what is it you're doing for work? I was, I, so I was into renewable energy, geothermal, yep. which yep. is heating and cooling of oh. the Earth's temperature. Yeah, yeah. And we would drill a hole and we were part of the team that would actually uh, take care of the machine that did the drilling. Yep. And that was picking up. You know, a company had bought us and it was really good. I worked with a whole really good bunch of guys. And then that just kind of went to a complete mm. stop like Australia wasn't interested in renewable energy yet yeah you know but at Blacktown there's a whole suburb that's like 60% off the grid really yeah off the grid and electricity everything like that yeah shit yeah it's crazy yeah they, they, that whole suburb just employs a whole team of uh, I think you do air conditioning don't you yeah yeah they, they have, employ a whole team of air conditioning to go out there every single month to just service it and they're making a killing Fuck. You should probably get yourself into that. Yeah, get yeah, tell, tell, if it's your family business, tell them about geothermal because they need HVACs. Yeah. They, bro, they pay them good money too because it's, it's renewable energy and a lot of it is government. So it's yeah. just like, yeah. That'd be fucking What do you put man. on? 10% on government jobs? Yeah. Yeah. So. Fuck. That's hectic. So that's what I'm, yeah, that's what I was doing. I still got like qualifications for that, but at the moment I'm going, I'm trying to get into film and television. I've got to go study 
um, I've been to a campus in the city that doesn't start till February. So what made you want to get into that? Well, the team mum thing kind of helped me put my foot in the door into the production industry. And, you know, they, I've, I've been around a whole bunch of cameras and a production team and it was pretty fun. But I like I just did a whole bunch of research and I thought I could be an actor because, you know, I, I don't know. I just it's just something that I would love to do. I think it's a type of creative thing that you, you know, you, you pretending to be someone else other than yourself. Yeah. I think that's what draws me to it is that I can pretend to not be myself for a while. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting to me because you're always yourself. Yeah. So. And you can be all different characters as yeah, well. Yeah. Like, I just love to be a character, like, like Johnny Depp, a character yeah. actor like that would be just to play someone else and get that freedom to be someone else and like, f- like look deep down in yourself and figure, you know, what's hurt you, what makes you funny, what, ma- you know, you go through all yeah. that. And they've talked about that with us. We get teachers that'll talk about, you know, creative processes to hmm. being a certain way. And it's pretty in depth. It's, when yeah, you nice. think about it, when you when you think about an actor, like you don't think about much if it's like, I don't know, who plays themselves every time? Adam Sandler? Yes. The Rock, they play themselves yeah. kind of the same. Yeah. But then you look at like, um, I don't know, who's your favorite actor? Like Johnny Depp or Tim, Tom Hardy or something? Bro, I don't really have one to be honest. You don't? No. You don't have, not Brad Pitt or anything? Um, uh, what's it? Like what's your favorite movie? Do you like Quentin Tarantino or like Leonardo or something? No, <laughs> bro. My favorite movies: American Pie. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> Who's in that? Who, who's who, what's that guy? The, the main dude, Stifler, mate. Oh, Stifler. Yeah, he's great. He's yeah. awesome, man. I like him. I like Brendan Fraser from The Mummy. Yeah, he was great. That's a, he was a mad actor. Oh, keyword Rambo as well. Yeah, Ram- so yeah Stallone, Rambo. Yeah, Rambo. He's one of my good top well, actors. Yeah, The Expendables is a great movie. The first mm. one was amazing. And then Jurassic Park, I love that shit too. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, what's his name? Uh, Jurassic World, the guy, oh. the Star Lord now. From the uh, Chris, Chris Pratt. Pratt. That's it. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah, just to be something like that. That's 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 my goal, and to see have Evie to see me into something that isn't reality, because Team Mum is is reality. Yeah, you know, it's a reality TV show. But I don't, you know, I want to be. I want to kind of. Ex- you know, explore my options. Yeah. Yeah. And what would probably make that worse is we're not we're in the day and age where it's not like when people on reality TV like five, ten years ago where you'd have an episode of TV and maybe someone would record of it. Yeah. Mm. Now stuff's streamed on platforms where you, ten years from now you could still watch it. Yeah. It's all just the scores. Yeah, it's crazy. And I can imagine the kids are like by the time by the time his daughter's like eight, hey, you'll probably find that she'll know how to use every, She'll be able to go back and watch it. Yeah. It's a bit weird for her. She's so camera enthusiastic now because she's experienced all of that she's had cameras in front of her she's had the whole deal photos photo shoots everything do you think that's a good or bad thing it's good it's it's good because she really shines but it's only it's only if they shine you know if they it's you can't if if they don't want to do it you can't force them to do it Mm. because it's technically work to a kid and I'm pretty sure in New South Wales a kid is only meant to like be in a work site for like four hours a week or maybe a little bit more There's, there's a law behind it and um yeah, so if if they enjoy it and they're enthusiastic about it, it's great. She has so much fun meeting people. She's so social. But if a kid's like drawn in and doesn't want to do it, mm. don't do not do it. Yeah. But a lot of parents will be like, no, you've got to do this. You've got to do this. You know, I'm not like that. Yeah, I see, I see those shows, like those kids dancing shows. Yeah. The way the mums oh, oh just God. push Did you them. see that cuties thing? Uh, I just shared it on my Instagram. I haven't seen it yet. Oh. Dude. It is a hot topic. Like, man, it's, it's, it's literally a French show and it's got like, it's, it's, basically legally pedophilia oh actually I think I did see that yeah is it coming out on Netflix no, yeah it's already it's already out people yeah, are trying to it. cancel Netflix yeah. now because of it what's insane is so on all the ratings now you have like stuff like Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes and all that right yeah where like the user rating is like 4% hmm. but then when the reviewers review it they're like oh it's like 90% oh 10 out of 10 yeah and yeah, it's a bit- they're there yeah. are seen there's there there are very let's say I don't know if I'm allowed, if I'm allowed to say with some of the stuff that happens I haven't watched it myself but mm. I've seen enough people talk about it read enough about it that yeah because I'm yeah, like I'm not watching this I'm, I'm not I'm not even gonna look at this because apparently the the topic of it is it's meant to be against sexualizing children apparently that's the ending plot like the ending meaning of it okay yeah but the problem is they're saying it's it's like saying don't sexualize children why we sexualize children. And these like these kids are like they're like thirteen or something now, but apparently back when they were recording, they were like eleven. So how were they sexualizing? So them? they were wearing very skimpy outfits. They were, oh, okay, yeah. 
um, they were like twer- twerking or stuff. But and then what the- you know, it's not even the show. This is the thing. Like they were twer- twerking, but it's not even the show. They're worried about the production. They're thinking about what happened behind the, f- the filming of. So this. they're guessing. Yeah. No, no. So, well, so there's four scenes. I'm they're not guessing. Uh, you can I'm see gonna... what they recorded. Oh, okay, you can yeah. see what they're doing, and there's people behind the camera. You've got to take one. You know, do one shot, two shots, yeah. two, ten shots to get the perfect shot, and they're doing this over and over again, yeah. recording these girls. Who's like 11, like you said, yeah, 12. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, there's, there's four scenes I'll mention, because they're the four ones that I was talking about. So, one of the girls apparently um, blows up a used condom and plays around with it. There's <laughs> yeah. another one where an 11 year, one of the 11 year old girls apparently takes a photo of her private area and uploads it to social media. Um, there's another scene where this girl who apparently is five tries to use stuff like chatter oh man I don't even want to talk about this Bro, that's I don't even know you bringing it up yeah that's yeah, that's yeah. weird that's, 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 that's why everyone's against it that's uh, terrible yeah I hope they take that down eh? that's they need to take it down man especially for you like you have a daughter and I shared it on Instagram man I don't yeah. care what they say I'm like sharing it everywhere can't still Netflix just this is ridiculous get yeah, it off because it's it's like, little kids can just go onto Netflix and watch this yeah. and go oh I want to be like that when I'm you know see that's nothing as well that's the nothing as well it's stuff like Netflix there's no age Rating blocking. Well, there is if the parent puts it on. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing. If a parent puts it on, let's be honest. How often does a parent put that stuff on this on yeah, the no. platform? No, not really. Almost never. And then, and then they and then they blame the parents. Oh, you can just put this on. It's like ninety percent of parents, especially right now, hmm. have no idea how to operate Netflix, let alone and activate like yeah. car filters. It should come that's scary. It should come with that stuff preset. Then you can change it yourself. That's the way it should be, because. Hmm. Because otherwise, who's ever, most parents are coming for install, and even if they know how to do it, a lot of parents won't even bother. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of scared to have kids, man. Like this society that they've got to grow up yeah. in these days. Fuck, you got to make sure you raise them up properly. Yeah, that's hard. You've got to do your best. Like I, I'm lucky. I I did. I think I, I'm lucky. I did have it young when I have more time and yeah. more energy to do like to make sure I do it right. Mm. But you're in the time. There's a gap between the content that people can see and people can't see. Yeah. In the future, I'm sure the media will restrict everything people can see so they can't spread this and spread that. Yeah. But right now, it's like a gap. Mm. It's like the laws are trying to get in to control it, but there's... How do you control what people watch? How, how yeah. do you control people put on YouTube or Netflix? You can't. Yeah. It's, so it's a bit... And every kid has an iPhone. Yeah. Every, everybody has an iPad. That's what I hate about that too. Like, kids can't be kids anymore. No, no. No, no. Like- all of us, the whole idea of a smart device, when we first get our hands on a smart device, like what, 14, 15 years old, was when we all actually got like iPhones, that sort of stuff. Remember like no. primary school, we had those shitty little fucking desktop. Web sliders, yeah. you're like sliding them out like yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, I, just, I, remember, I remember I was so happy when I was in like year seven, and my first phone had a, a dedicated shutter button. <laughs> so you press the button, or oh, something, the young kids wouldn't even understand <laughs> how like how this, you had to hit like a certain number like four times hit the right letter yeah. and you had a, you had a, you uh, had a 250 letter letter there's old SMS. fucking Nokia's the bricks uh, <laughs> uh, I, remember, I remember people just be smart as throw them at a water test and they never <laughs> Bro, that old fucking bomb proof. Or that always the back would always fall and the battery would always come out. Yeah. <laughs> Could you drop them? Bro. But that was nothing. Yeah. It was so simple. Your battery played up, pop off the back, throw away your battery, put new one in, cost you five bucks from your battery, you're done. Now with iPhones, bro, you're gonna pay so much if you want to get your battery replaced or screen mm. replaced. Yeah, my screen's cracked and I'm just not not even bothering nah, with it. It's fucked. Not even bothering with it. So how do you, I guess, try and raise your daughter to not be like society and Oh. fucking fall into all those that shit I guess you just try and get them outside as much as possible like I only give Evie her iPad at night really yeah. I try to like give it at a, give it to her at night and go put her to bed during the day like she I want her to go out I, want, oh, I, I take her out for walks we do that in the PM walk sometimes yeah. um, put her on her bike I mean she's smart. Evie's only three years old so I haven't gone through where she's at school and you know, they're all socializing. Yeah. They're all able to talk to each other, communicate. And, you know, that that's that's when things start to get hard. And then right now it's easy. Yeah. Three is fantastic. The best age. Mm. But five, by the time they start back chatting, I suppose, maybe. Yeah. They got a teacher and they don't want, you know, that's that's when the real test starts. Teenagers, that's where it starts. <laughs> yeah. So, well, yeah, I'm, I'll be like into my 30s by the time she's a teenager. So at least I got a chance of handling it, I mm. suppose. Uh, you and your partner, I guess, on the same page on the way you raise her, like. Oh, right now, right now. Yeah, she's yeah. not one that just goes here's your iPad have it for the whole day, whereas uh, you're taking her. I don't know. I don't see. I don't. I don't know. Oh, I've. Yeah. 
I don't know. I'm not hundred percent sure. Georgina is um. I don't know. It's like she's a good mother and she she does the best she can, but I have no idea what she does. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I have to trust her like she trusts me. Yeah, like your daughter's getting one discipline here and then yeah. another here, like counteracts it. That'd be very hard. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Especially when you're trying to raise like a strong individual woman, you know. Like, well, yeah, that's right. You've got to be strong yourself. Mm. If you, you know, you it's so it's it's really difficult. I think I was lucky, so lucky, yeah. and you know, MTV would pay for us to go to uh, relationship counselling and they would help us out and they would you know try and get thing, get us to work out for Evie's sake and in the end it did but you know if we have one disagreement that's it yeah like, there's no there's no really like there's no working anything out there's no compromising it's just I have her and then or she has her yeah you know I don't you can't get involved with that other pe- person's life mm. but yeah. it'd be tough because she has her more times than you yeah yeah, I hate that. Like, the women automatically get the more yeah, custody. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, know. I, don't, I don't like that. They at have all. like some special privilege or something like that. But the father's just as much the parent as the mother. Yeah, that's what I don't get. It's, it should be equal. Like, but that's the case. Is that sometimes the mother, like the father, is working all the time. Yeah. So, all the all, uh, yeah, it's it's it, case by case. Yeah, you just don't know. You just really don't know. It's it's so it's different for me a little bit, but. If you take the average person, hmm. I mean, the, the father is most likely working yeah. all the time. Did you agree on custody like with her or did it have to go? We, we don't have a custody agreement or anything no. like that. It's, it's just, just like I go pick her up when I would like to if she says it's okay. Mostly it's every second weekend. It's like a continuous thing. So ABC sees my side of the family more. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, it's taken a lot of work to, just to get to this point. Beforehand, it was just chaos. Really? Oh, it's just like... Like what? Like it's the constant argue. Like it's yeah. It's so you intense. have to argue to get your daughter. Oh, it's, it's it's just ridiculous. I can't even explain to you the amount of crap you have to go through to get to the point where it's okay. It's not even like the best it could be. It's just okay. That's because you both have different opinions. Yeah. You know what I mean? You it's you that, can't pick at it. the end of the day. That's your daughter. Like yeah. But you should be civil when it comes to that like she needs to see both parents equally you know well not everyone has the same mindset yeah everyone some but you know some girls have maybe have reasons to keep them away someone's here yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, well, look at your face though when that noise went off you're just like oh it's a little bit because then you actually do have to edit that part out yeah otherwise you just all glad to be sitting here saying nothing <laughs> <laughs> host the show it's alright anyways where would we be at uh, I have no idea. Uh, raising people, yeah. raising kids, <laughs> raising people, <laughs> it, it raising. custody and stuff yeah, like that. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, custody and chaos, chaotic. Yeah. Do you feel like she got spiteful because your relationship ended? So she felt like she wanted to hold your daughter back from you a bit, or? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah th- throughout the relationship, you kind of get spiteful toward each other because, you know, when you're in a relationship and you have a kid you expect a lot. Yeah. It's hard to not expect a lot because the mother has to go through so much and mm. yeah, but the father also has to, you know, money and finance just like it's just yeah, it's not fun. And it's not cheap raising. It's not child. cheap, it's not fun. Well, you know what, it is fun. It is fun. It's not fun dealing with, you know, the financial stress that comes yeah. with it because you've got to change everything up. Your lifestyle stops, comes to a halt. Mm. You've got to adapt so quickly. I mean, not a lot of people can do that. Yeah. So, but you have a fit, good family support, you'll be right. Yeah. You have a good family support, you'll be fine. How the hell did teen mums come about? Um, funny enough, me and Georgina were in Bali when she got the phone call. So, like, she applied for it or something? No, I, don't, I, I don't know if she applied for it. I think a friend told her to apply or a friend applied for her. And she got a phone call and she just, we were in the back of a cab in Bali and she's like, oh, yeah, uh, MTV just called me and said that they're interested in um, filming about, like, the relationship we've had and all that stuff and I was like oh, okay alright so we got back a few, two months later they just started recording just went in for a meeting in Sydney in their office and, and that was that started having cameras all around us fuck that would have been crazy eh? it's different it's you know you got it's not so much like lights camera action it's just like you know guy that has a video recorder recording he just you. follows you around yeah he just follows you around your day to day life that be awkward at points when you f- for the first day it's awkward it's awkward having a big camera in front of you like a big big 
big videography camera. Is there like limitations of what they don't record? Uh, well, well, yeah. They try, they probably try to get as much. I, as possible. I wouldn't. I don't know what they. You know, I, like I know that there's a, the story behind this is what they're trying to get out. I don't know what they're not allowed to say and when they're allowed to record. Yeah. So that that's up. That's that's more or less up to them. Mm. But they're just trying to get our story out. You know, and they're trying to. I think the main goal is to help young mothers as well. So, like, because when mothers go through this, they think they're by themselves. And yeah. A lot of them are. Sometimes they don't have family support, and they watch the show and they enjoy it. And mm. I've had I've had a few like mothers message me and just like for support, and just wanted to talk. And I'll just speak to them and be nice. Just say you know, like it's it'll be, it gets better and it does. It does yeah. get better. It doesn't always stay the way you know if it's bad. So, how was your relationship through that being on Teen Mums? It was. She got better than worse, than better. Yeah. Now it's good, but we don't really talk to each other. So that's probably why it's good. <laughs> I just, I, Georgina will drop her off at daycare. I'll go and pick her up. That's it. Sometimes it's better to be like that, I guess. It is way better to be like that. In my case, yeah, it is. It's way better to be like that. We'll be mutual, but only because we don't get involved in each other's life. Yeah. Like if I'm, she does, she gets upset when I'm like dating other girls. Other than that, it's fine but she I think she's just protective of Evie I think I don't know I haven't really talked to her about it how many fight scenes were there <laughs> uh, I don't even know there was a few there was a few arguments the point where we had to actually go see a relationship counsellor we wow. just couldn't agree on anything we had to go we, yeah we had to travel into the city and see a relationship counsellor because we were just there was just no agreeing to how we should raise Evie and it's yeah it's, were you living together uh, in Cronulla, yeah, but by the time, by the time we started filming, no, no, I was at, I was at North Sydney at oh, that time. Shit. Yeah, I was working towards, I was in the city, but I was working all over the shop. So I was, I was around, but I'd only fly back to come pick up my daughter. So I'd fly back every second week and then get, get off the, get off the uh, plane and then go pick up Evie and then go back home. Sunday, drop her back off, back on a plane, back to Melbourne. Yeah, I did that for like a solid year and a half. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. And then dealing with, imagine doing that and then dealing with, you know, why you're overseas or something, I'm overseas, um, interstate, dealing with, you know, my ex calling me and asking me about this and that. You can't, I, yeah. I'm not there. I can't do anything, you know. It's very stressful. Yeah, it would have been a whole crazy experience being on that. Yeah, yeah. I guess what's, what's the biggest thing you learn about that whole experience? Oh, it's just better to just come to a compromise and argue. Don't ever argue. Yeah, never, argue. never solves anything. Yeah, we were arguing at one point. And I saw Evie getting upset and started like hugging me and Georgina, and I was just like, "It's just not worth arguing anymore." Yeah, like she and she sees that. She does. She see they see they're so smart. It's not funny. Mm. They grow up right in front of you and they learn and they're just basically copies of you until they come into themselves. Mm. But yeah, it's it's intense. Yeah. If you live a shit lifestyle or fight, that's the way they grow up to that's be right. and you don't want that to happen. Yeah, but it is hard, especially when you're not with the mother. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. You've got a... Your lifestyle is different to the lifestyle that they're 70% used to. Mm. They've got a... You know, they, later on they do pick, you know, do what they want to do and how they want to do it. But obviously my lifestyle and Georgina's lifestyle is very different. Yeah. Like I was always into exercise and everything like that and she really wasn't. How did you even meet her? Um, I don't know. Oh, how did they meet her? It was just. It wasn't me. Come on, man. You've already been with her for like a It was 2014. So I was still in school. Yeah. I was, I think it, we just graduated and I think she was in like, I don't know, I think she, she, she was in like Quaker's Hill, I think. So you met her on like Tinder or some shit? No, no, I met her through mutual friends. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I don't know. I don't think it was. No, I met a few mutual mutual friends. Oh, okay, yeah. We met, we met, yeah. We've, it's, yeah, I, I, it was so long ago. Yeah, it was, it was just a few mutual friends. Like I knew her through a few of my friends. And mm. they said, they asked, they, we just ended up going on a few dates. And you know what? It's a whole nother story and it's ridiculous. <laughs> That's what it is. It's a whole nother thing. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, it's intense. Can make a whole movie on that story by the sounds of it. Well, that's why they decided. They, we had to explain to them our story, and that's why they decided to film us. I mean, you got to have some type of story that's a bit different. Yeah. And ours was just really, really intense for a solid two and a half years. So yeah. What made you different? Like, what was so intense about it? 
just the, the the fights, the arguments. See, the, I feel like that's kind life, of normal. Though, like the lifestyle, yeah, to to a point. I mean, it can can be better, it can be worse. Mm. I suppose you just got to find it when you want, like when you're applying for it. I suppose they just look for neutral ground. Yeah, you know, you you've got to want to make it better. Some parents don't want to be involved in their child's life. Mm. They like I told them I did. I told them I was willing to like fight for my relationship with my daughter. I was willing to try to be with Georgina and that just never worked. So yeah. we had, we were always willing to try and you, you've got to also agree to have your life on TV. Yeah. You've got to have, like to agree to a certain point, your lifestyle changes just a little bit, you know. Some people will notice you, some people will ask you, some people will assume you're the worst parent ever. Hmm. But, you know, you just kind of just shake it off and just go whatever. Like sometimes I get a few, like people hating on me on Instagram. Or so, yeah, yeah, fuck it, who cares? Yeah. Were your family on the team mums too or? Your family, like my, oh, my mum. Yeah, my mum was. My mum was. Yeah, people like my mum. Yeah, yeah. She gave good advice. People like my mum. Did you make an appearance, Brady, or what? No, I yeah. actually didn't. I wasn't I living out out west. Oh yeah, time. that's right. I yeah. was towards the city, and I was traveling so much. You know, doing this, doing the filming. I have no time, man. Between that, my daughter work filming. Not much time. I'd go see them sometimes. I would go yeah. like out to like Fiddler and stuff like that. Mm. But yeah, I was. To go from the city out west, every time I come, every like for two weeks being away, to see my daughter, it's just can't do it. Yeah, can't do it. Yeah, and all the time, like, all the times I interact with Vivi is like off camera and all this sort of stuff as well. Because the recording is like the it's not like they're recording 24, 24 7 or yeah. stuff as mm. well. Plus, I I even like originally said I did, um I didn't really feel like making an appearance anyway. Like, um, if he's got a father, my my role is John's best John's best friend, like look after his daughter, Uncle Birdie. Yeah, you never know. He might make an appearance. You never know. Mm. Who knows? Imagine that head on TV. <laughs> sorry, sorry, about national. Media. Instagram yeah. would just blow up. <laughs> you need to start posting more pictures, mate. Yeah, yeah I know. that's I what know. I told him. I told him to start posting more pictures. I know a lot, of, a lot of my a lot of my stuff on Instagram is all just like scenic shots and stuff. All around. <laughs> Some people, are, I posted photos of me and him, and a few people were like, "Oh, is he your partner?" <laughs> yeah, 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 no, yeah. What point? Yeah, what point? Um, some of his over-the-top fans were thinking that Jordan and I were in a relationship. No. I was like, I, was, I, was like, I just oh, tease them and go, yeah. What a, what a yes, couple, eh? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's the bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the cub. Oh. <laughs> I would just tease him. I would be like, I'd just be like, yeah, no, he's my lover, all right. Oh, God. <laughs> I take nothing serious on Instagram. No, you I can't. Just, nah, but so many people do. Exactly. You get a little bit of a, like, you get a little bit, like, I had like I think 17,000 people on my account at once yeah but like not a lot of them would be following me but you can see hmm. you know what I mean you can see when people are on your account yeah and yeah you can see like when people save your stuff and all like that it's just yeah you, hmm. you're thinking to yourself well, what am I getting myself into yeah because they're saving it what are they doing with it and then they reply to like your stories you know when you ask like questions yeah, and yeah. stuff and you can choose which ones to answer oh my god <laughs> Some of the questions. Some of be... the questions are not PG, man. What's some of the questions you've been asked? Oh, some of the one of the questions I got was like, um, like you're such a shit fighter, why don't you go jump or something like that? Really? Yeah, oh. I've had like, I've had what did I have? I've got like, I don't know. I just kind of adore him, man. Just, any any no, girls trying help. to crack on? Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, but it was it really picked up once it kind of got on stand a little bit. I had like a few. People like it airs in the UK, I think, as well. I'm not really sure. Oh, okay, yeah. And um, yeah, it kind of changed a little bit. I was I was in Melbourne, and I've had people come up to me and say, "Oh, I know you from somewhere." I was at the fiddler. I've had someone go, "Are you from Team Mum?" Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, but I expect the worst because I'm like, "What are you gonna say now?" Yeah. Every time I get a message, I'll, like eight eight times out of ten, it's it's good. But the two times is the only time that that's bad. You concentrate on. Yeah, you just, concentrate on the bad ones and you go yeah. why is someone saying that to me and I'm thinking oh just block just block yeah I don't know I just reply back and say stupid stuff yeah yeah like just just I don't I've had yeah I don't know somebody was like why are you such a bad father why do you give Georgina such a bad rap and I was I just posted like the Steve Carell um, meme it's the same internally screaming yeah because I'm just like just not saying anything I'm like screaming at myself because I try to be the best father for Evie yeah and people are just yeah they assume they assume yeah it's it's the shit being a thing about social media everyone assumes yeah. instead of actually knowing what happens behind the camera it's part of the fun yeah did your Instagram blow up from being on Team Moms? not really not not extensively I think I 
I had like only like two or three hundred followers, and then it just blew up to like two thousand four hundred. Oh, okay. Is T Mums even yeah. big here in Australia? I, I don't know. I I'll suppose be, so. Because I'll be honest, before he went on the thing, I didn't even know there was an Australian. No, I only, knew it, I only knew it because Georgina would watch the UK, the US versions. Yeah. And they were like, oh, I don't know. I, I don't, I've never watched it, but I. I didn't even know it was still a show it anymore. Wasn't, it, it was never here. Like, yeah. it, we were the first ones to do it here. Fuck. And I don't know if, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how popular it actually was but from what the film has told me it did get a lot of get a lot of, it got a lot of mm. praise I guess it would never be good as the US one like you remember when they oh, tried the to bring one, that uh, Jersey Shore show out here the Australian version of, yeah yeah. Never that, didn't even, that didn't even get past two episodes or whatever yeah. they did yeah nah. we think I th- we filmed ten yeah nice. so we did alright we did alright it was good and how many it keeps going you're on like, if they keep going more seasons you're on those possibly yeah, nice. Possibly. Okay, well, only time will tell, really. We, I don't really know. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be hard filming in that, especially with Corona, if there was... Yeah, more. yeah. Well, now that it's kind of starting to get over with, you know, you never know. Yeah. But, you know, if, if they do, I'll say yeah, because it was a good experience and Evie enjoyed it. As long as Evie's enjoying it, I'm mm. fine. Like, if she's not enjoying it, then I'm not going to do it. It's good, like, you can leverage it to kind of build your own kind of brand and that if you wanted to as well. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Like, I I really, I don't really want to be well-known. I know okay. if you're well-known, you can, you know, you you make money or whatever, or you're famous, but yeah. I don't really want to be well-known. I kind of want to just, would like to do what I want to do. And that's stupid of me saying, oh, I want to be, I want to get into acting yeah. and not be well-known. But, like, some actors <laughs> yeah. aren't, like, you know, then you know their name, but you don't care what they're doing. Yeah. Oh, if people know my name, that's fair enough, but I don't want people to be involved in like what I'm doing and everything like that yeah because I think that's a nightmare and you see a lot of celebrities go, go downhill once they hit a certain level of fame yeah all the haters all they all just they just go they just go downhill man just... and the media bro the media is the worst yes yeah the media is the worst see what they're doing to um the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard thing yeah like it's such a private thing and mm. they're all over it there's just YouTube videos about imagine being that famous you'd be yeah, yeah. it's fucked yeah. I remember watching... Did you watch the Michael Jordan documentary on Netflix? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He couldn't even go out of his hotel room because nah. of the media and shit like that. He'd feel... he got, like, really depressed and stuff. Yeah. And he said he's, like, he's just felt, like, crap all the time. He couldn't be... Like, you want to be famous to be famous. Yeah. You know, unless you really, you know, need some type of validation. Hmm. But, yeah, it's the same thing from most celebrities as well. They're just drugs, alcohol. Yeah. Because that's, the, that's their escape. Yeah. So. so many of them like overdose and shit like that yeah it's crazy and they always say like, like money's good it doesn't really fix anything no money doesn't buy happiness yeah. no. if anything it lots of makes more problems than solutions a lot of the times it does yeah yeah so you're gonna do acting Brody or what <laughs> yeah, I got he can be Tim Burton be a director <laughs> you've just... got, you got a weird imagination like Tim Burton it'd be funny just got to start writing novels and scripts and stuff like that, and then you never know. Yeah, that's something nice, though. You, you, you can do it now. You can just be. The you never know, guy. man. You feel like if you if you're good at you're, you told me you got a vivid imagination, so you'd be good at writing scripts, right? Well, yeah, very scenarios, but. Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Do something like that. You can be the camera guy. I think that's what you like doing. Yeah, he does. He's good with the camera. Mm. Yeah, I enjoy like camera. I enjoy like mucking around with editing and stuff like that. Like, I did that a bit of that for the first time this year. Like, a lot of a lot of my drinking, drinking some alcohol, doing some, <laughs> doing some editing, raging, yes. raging when you make a mistake, realizing realizing about three hours in there's, there's an undo button. <laughs> there's an undo button. <laughs> at, that point, it was, at that point, it was too late. <laughs> it was too far in. <laughs> oh, oh. Definitely too hard. So you, we spoke before about vlogging. What was all that about, Team One Vlog? Oh, but just another insight on, like, did they wife. show that on the show? Like, no. Nah, well, no. They they do a type of vlogging on the show, but it's more like you know you just you know tap the vlog and you're kind of sitting there talking about what happens. Ah, you know, okay, you're filling yeah. in the details. You know, that's what they like to hear. A lot of people don't want to miss out on the details. They want yeah. to know about what's going on. They want to feel like they're involved and you know if they're in the same situation. They want to relate. Yeah. You know? um, with with the vlogging, it was kind of just the same like YouTube. Because you know, get on YouTube if you can do a really good vlog about your life in between the show. It's something that they would want, but you know that's a lot of work. 
Vlogging is yeah. a lot of work. It is, it is. You know, like if you're not, uh, I guess that's why vloggers get sponsorships and stuff because they, they, if they're not getting paid, they're not earning any money. Hmm. They, they don't have time to work if they've got to edit and film and get content. It's fucking editing that takes. Yeah. That's editing. why with my vlogs, I just like to keep it raw. So I don't have to yeah. do much editing. You don't want to do. You don't want to do much editing. No. Unless you have to pay someone for it, but you've got to have an income. Yeah. You know, you got to. It's not easy, but once you're there, you're there. Will you want to do vlogging again? Um. I'd do it, but I'd I'd want to do it like, I'd really want to get into the whole, you know, going somewhere on a hike and yeah, or yeah. the snowboarding. We were going to go down to Melbourne and film before the whole lockdown, and yeah. that just completely shut us off. Yeah. So I would definitely do it again. Yeah. I'd love to do it again. The way I see it is like the way why I vlog is document my journey so then mm. when I have kids like, they can go back and watch that shit. Yeah, that's cool. And like see like all the hard work and stuff that I've put into the point where I am yeah. in the future. Yeah, that's great. That's the same way. I'd like to have like Evie to have a look on and see what I've done. Mm. You know, have a look and go, Oh like that that's my dad doing whatever I'm doing whether he's acting or the vlogging or the teen mom. Yeah. It's something that they can look back on. It's the great thing about technology. Yeah, like you see with our parents talking about stories of the old times. Like, are you talking shit or what? like? Yeah, yeah, see, <laughs> yeah. so much you yeah. can't trust. Yeah, like this is all fucking. You're documenting it, so it yeah. happened. Like it happened. Mm. Though we, we, the way we were recorded, they'll probably look at it like twenty years from now and go, "What is this black and white level level of crap?" <laughs> <laughs> so, Brody, let's talk about you a bit. What was your upbringing and shit like? Okay, so. I came from a decent family, including me, with five of us kids. Um, dad's, a, dad's a workaholic. Um, Mum used to work the night shift, so raised by siblings, being the youngest, I was took the brunt of all the <laughs> bullying and stuff like yeah. that. Um, went to school at um, Hassegrove because I just lived on the same street as school. Are you still living at that same house? Yes, yeah, so I was originally planning to move out sometime at the end of this year. Yeah. Well... COVID. <laughs> the world just decided to tell me, tell me to go, you're fucking awesome. <laughs> so, I've got to, so I've got to wait for that, all that sort of stuff. But the way the housing looks like it, everything's gone down, it'll be a lot cheaper to move out the next year or two anyway. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, at the moment, yeah, still stuck with the parents. Um, but yeah, and then went to uh, Plopton High, as yeah. you said before, spent the first four years hanging out with like you and all of them. Then senior years was... Basically, me, John, and year eleven we had Ben was still with us because he left. In, he left yep. in year eleven. Oh, he did too. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then um, after that, just going to a lot, like a lot of work. Went through a lot of different, a lot of different industries because I was trying to find what was good for me. Um, I did like six months doing um a trade. I did like construction injection, um, which is basically like we used to add. Have you ever heard of seen issues where like how buildings start to lower? Yeah. So basically what injection is, is you can do it parts of houses or entire houses. The biggest job we did, the two biggest jobs we did was one was Sydney Tunnel. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because um, I can talk about it now because I don't cause I work for the company. So it doesn't bother me. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, and basically what was happening is a lot of people don't know about this, but the Sydney Tunnel was actually the middle of it was starting to drop. Okay. And if it wasn't fixed because there's water all around, around there because it goes under the yep. harbour, is you have to c- c- raise it and seal it again. Otherwise, water on crack, the entire thing was would have flooded. Mm. And the insane thing is the house, the, the house working on it and all that, when people were still driving through it. That's so just you, catastrophic, isn't I know. it, really? Well, that's the thing. That's the thing. So you always people drive through where if one, one mistake, mm. me, the people driving, everyone... Gone. Yeah. Yeah. And they and the, and the fact that the government lets everyone go through there and not warn anyone at all baffled mm-hmm. me. And this is back when I this is back just after high school, so it was like wow. late twenty fourteen, early twenty fifteen, because I did that for about half a year. Then I did like warehousing stuff. Mm-hmm. Worked worked at the cut for a, a organization called Skilled. Okay. Which is basically you just go and help other companies with all different stuff. So I got a lot of experience doing different jobs and everything through that. Then. I ended up going to Coles and then trying to, well, I decided to study at uni to study psychology. And then they told me that I had to do a year of um, social science. And a lot of a lot of false stuff is forced on you like it's facts. Yeah. From, like, from basically talking about how every white person is racist to... <laughs> 
Oh. Here comes the controversy. Yeah, yeah every, everything is controversial. Yeah. And the, the thing that got me was um, I actually got in trouble at a bunch of lectures because I don't like I don't I don't like being told something that's not right. So you debated? Yes. <laughs> because that's what, that's what lectures originally meant to be. Yeah, you debate. Yeah. It's a good debate. Yeah, a lot, a lot, it's a good like, argument. It's funny too because the the, what, the the like proper science classes that I had mm. for things such as psychology and all that, the got along with lectures easy. Yeah. But things when it came to like sociology and all that sort of stuff, another story. Another story right there. The funniest thing was um, I had a, f- a good friend of mine at uni. Um, his name was Mustafa. And he's um. Sorry, just gonna focus. No. Nope. Yeah, and um, um, he, he, he's like he's like very dark skinned a lot. And it was and what was funny was um, one of the lecturers was talking about racism. And starts talking about white privilege and all sort of stuff. Then he didn't like. I said. I said to the fact that I'm like I'm majority Irish. Yeah. And I said to him, I'm like, I'm like you talk about like little things like um um. American, uh, African Americans where they were in prison for like 200 years mm. and I'm like the Irish were in prison for 2,000 years by black people oh, really? yeah, yeah but you don't hear you don't hear us complaining never knew that I was going to say it's a fact but it's yeah. a funny fact because no one ever talks about it no. we just became our hogs and <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's, how we, that's how we got over fair enough <laughs> um, yeah next Alex Jones bro you're out <laughs> but uh, what, what I found hilarious was he was talking about the stuff and then he looks at Mustafa right next to me and he goes right Mustafa and we just look at each other and we're like, we're like he's calling me racist and asking my friend to c- confirm that I'm racist <laughs> and we're just looking at him like what is, what is wrong with you why are you talking about this stuff all the time we're here to study psychology and sociology and that and the first first thing we like this was the first day. Oh really? Yeah, we first day first we sit day. down, and then this is how the how he opened the first lecture. He goes, "So white privilege," and mm. I was like, "Oh my no, no." Mm. And then after white privilege was gender pay gap. Like, oh, and then, then then feminism came up. Then gender um, neutral and all that gender, shit. Oh, oh man, I even had to I even had to do a essay on basically why there is so much controversy towards white men, and then. I actually failed. I actually failed that essay because apparently it wasn't negative enough towards white men. What? Yes. It's basically when you do the social science part of university, it's like how you see on like like on things like with Joe Rogan, like Alex Jones, yeah. um, and or Stephen Crowder, all that sort of stuff. Ben Shapiro, that sort of stuff is in Australia. Yeah. But it's in certain areas, but it's slowly getting worse. That's why I eventually, and that's why eventually I left uni because I couldn't. I couldn't like. I'm like. I came to study psychology, and I had like maybe one psychology class a week. Everything else was, the, and I went to uni four days a week. Yeah. For, for like for like half a day each, and so I had so I had, I had like so I had four I had four units, but you'd have like two classes per unit. We clarify that you are not a racist, right? No. And you are, you're okay with other people's opinions, but you, you like facts. Yes. Yes, yes. clarify this. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 I clarify, clarify this, yes. Yes. Um, I don't have negative opinions, I just, I like to debate. That's yes. something I just, something I Each to their own, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, each, yes. each to their own. I, I don't judge people, I just don't, yeah. I just don't like people trying to force me to listen to what, like, yeah. like to agree that I'm more than happy to listen to someone's opinion. Mm. I, I enjoy that. But when someone says to me that I have to think that way or I'm an evil person, hmm. I'm like, well, that's just you forcing in an, an opinion on someone else. Yeah. Which is in itself kind of truly controversial. Yeah. It's good to have an argument. It is it's healthy to actually have these arguments though. Yeah. Because you need to, it's, it's well, healthy. Well, it is I, healthy. I think something, something I learned in psychology, and I like you to talk about this thing a lot because it's a very, it's, it's something that's not talked about very commonly, but it's, so you got, you got this um, term which is called the echo room effect. Yeah. So a lot of people do this. A lot of people do this, especially especially like people on like the hey, like the whole far left thing with what they do in America. Now. And with the echo chamber effect, you surround yourself with people with the same opinion of you. So you say something, and basically everyone just echoes what you say. Yeah. So you so and then and that's why and that's why a lot of, a lot of people who who put themselves in these environments get extremely aggressive and 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 like angry when people tell them opinions they don't like. Because it's just surround themselves with just all these people with the same idea, the same opinion. Mm. That if you say something that's slightly not even against, but just that you just don't agree one hundred percent what someone says, they you, all the labels start coming out, all the like all the controversies and that. It's just like what happens to the world is when you can just have a conversation with someone and say, okay, I don't like this because of this. 
okay, I think you're wrong because of this. Mm. And, you can and it's the healthy debate. Yeah, it's but, not like that. And everything has to be politically correct. And that's, see, and that's the thing. Like, I, like, I like saying stuff and not worrying too much about the political side of it. Like, it's fun to talk about the stuff, but I will admit, I talk about it very non-seriously. Yeah. Which, which in, in itself, apparently, can somehow offend most people. Because mm. when I say stuff and I start laughing, they go, why is that funny? And I'm like... What do you mean? Why is it funny? And then they start getting into their their whole start of it and their life story, and then I'm like, okay. But that's like the Australian humour too. Like we take the piss well, out of everything. Well, that's the thing. It's just like it's just like um the 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 c word. It's it's not offensive in Australia. No. no any other country apparently is the worst word to yeah. say. But in Australia, you call you, you call your closest friends friends that word. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, but that's we're not. politically incorrect. That, well, that's true, yeah. And that, that's, that's a good thing because you don't want to be serious all the time. No. Nah. America's so... It's just... You watch these all these videos and they watch one video about the Earth being flat and they believe it. <laughs> like, yeah, you that's can't... That's scary, that thing. Yeah, that's... that's. But there are people out there that believe that. I mean, as I said, each to their own. They Did, believe whatever they want, but, mm, like, there's facts. you got to... Yeah. yeah, just talking about the other thing, though. Didn't some guy actually shoot... Apparently, I don't know if it was happened like a year or two ago... Um, I remember hearing a story, I don't know the details about it, but apparently some guy, a flat over, shot himself in a rocket and tried to shoot himself into, into the air, into the space, and to prove that the Earth was flat. Yeah, he didn't make it. And it came, no, it came back down and killed him. Yeah, he didn't make it. He was like 70, he was, he was like 60 something or whatever. Oh, he didn't make it. And, the fact that, and I'm pretty sure they actually recorded, they, I think they live streamed it actually on something. I think it might have been like Facebook, Instagram or something, and it was immediately just removed straight away. But because it was only uploaded onto their like flat earth thing, yeah. most people didn't hear about it. Yeah. But I remember hearing about it was on I think it was on a Joe Rogan podcast. They actually mentioned it when they're talking about the. Oh really? Thing. Yeah, and I remember and they were talking about it and he, and he was like, "Oh, Jamie, bring it up." And then and then like they brought up the articles. I'm like, "No way, this is real." <laughs> <laughs> the fact the things be surprised. People Some people, bro, especially Americans, they're fucking loose. Yeah. yeah. They're still. I mean, they're still writing right now. Yeah. It's been what, like four or five months. Yeah, that country is. It's gone downhill. Yeah, well, what's insane is like it, it, you could I could understand if it was about one topic, but it's like it starts to calm down, and they just bring another. They bring a new topic in, yeah. it comes back up, and they've done it like three times. It was first you had the guy who with the point with the anti police stuff, then after that you had the Black Lives Matter. What about the, the other Matter. week when that guy was hopping in his car and got shot like seven times? The black guy. Did you see that? Was yeah, that, was that, that he was that. breaking up a fight, and the cops came. He said, "All right, I'll hop in my car now," and the cops shot him. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like it was like nine times. He survived back. as well, I think. Yeah, yeah. he's suing. Yeah. He's suing the police. Yeah, and then you had that other thing where you, um this guy this um guy was running. This is this, and when I saw this, this just shows me how bad it's gotten. This guy was ru- running because it was while well, riding was going on, and he was running with his young daughter, and um, there was footage of it as well. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's all sort of removed now. And he was running along a footpath, and a straight bullet hit him. Yeah, <laughs> jeez, all right. Yeah, and then he, and but I don't think I don't know if he I don't think he died. I think he's got badly injured. But the fact that he's running away, he's got a small child with him. Yeah, that's good. And his child. I think I saw that. It was a video, eh? And then yeah, someone got the yeah, aftermath yeah, of it. Was, it. it was all, all, all yeah. of their new, their mainstream yeah. media as well. And like there, it was, it was like a, it was like an above image of it. Like there was a helicopter filming it or something. Mm. Or maybe it was the CCTV and it was just aimed at the right angle. But yeah, he's running. He's got the kid's like no more than like eight. <laughs> and the fact that the kid, he, like. I'm hoping that he that he didn't pass. Yeah. But still, whether he passed or not, the fact that his kid's seen that at such a young age, that's gonna haunt me. that kid for life. Well, that's the thing. That's what worries me with 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 um, say America as prime example right now. It's not this generation that worries me. It's, it's the, the next one. The next yeah. generation that has just seen so much of their country do this. And that's what worries me. It's like, There's probably all a massive effect from like the mentality that COVID bring as well, the whole lockdown. But then it's getting worse because now they're rioting, so then more yeah. people are getting it. It's affecting men- like people don't realize with COVID, like this, like is billions of people in the world. Some of them are going to have mental health, you know, mm. you know, problems, and it's going to it escalate from there. Yeah, you know, it's not healthy, and that whole country because there's. 325 million compared to our yeah. 29 million or something yeah. like that's an insane amount their, their gun laws need to change too I think that's why the cops, cops just shoot so easily because yeah, they, they get, don't know if the other person yeah. has a gun or not yeah, yeah see we're, we're like in Australia, in Australia like, you've always got the taser there yeah. I know the, the American police have too but it's but I'm pretty sure there's only a very small circumstances where Australian police are actually allowed to pull out a firearm they're firearm yeah. they have to pull out a taser there should be just more more to get a pistol 
But there should be no reason that you need to own a semi-automatic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a pistol, yeah, that's that's all defense. You don't need anything else. But you've got guys out there that have, uh, you know, their bunker rooms full yeah. of it's oh, literally I think semi-automatics. ammunition they make as well. Yeah. Like you can get, you can, you can live in a suburban area, own a pump, some kind of, I don't, I don't know a lot about guns, I can't throw out a gun name as well, like <laughs> a pump action kind of like type of shotgun. And then you put rounds in it, which are designed that when you shoot someone, the pellets spin and they release a chemical that burns. Really? Yeah. Fuck. No, oh, no, yeah. No, no, they don't have to go explain it. They've even got, this was, uh, they got in a lot of trouble for this. I don't know. Someone, someone tried to even, someone even tried to release like um, ammunition, the American, the, but the government banned it. And this is like shows you how insane is there like some anti halal bullets or something that came out. Oh my god. Yes. How yeah, the fuck do you make a bullet anti halal? I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Some dried animal blood or some some crap. Yeah, fucking no. crazy. But the fact that someone tried to make that and sell that, I'm, I hope that, I hope that didn't get through. I hope they get through. They don't even want bomb stocks either on the semi-automatics mm. where you're firing and in the gun recoils it bumps into you so you're automatically firing so you just go do 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 like that yeah, the, yeah. Bump, the bump stock is giving you your, that leverage to just hit the button without any effort at all shit so it's like a rifle it's a literal rifle massive mm. bullet and it's constantly firing like an assault rifle Bro. which is just intense yeah, like, I, I, I can understand like you know semi-automatic pistols hunting rifles I've never even held a gun in my life really no I've never held a gun uh, I've never I've, I've never actually seen a gun except on a police officer yeah. I've there's went, none around there's nothing in I went hunting in that like when I was younger yeah oh, my, I'm, my, one of my family members up in Toowoomba you know, he has like hunting rifles and mm. they have like kangaroos and all that stuff but other than that, I've never seen like an actual, you know, AK forty seven. I do like, have yeah. a funny hunting story when I was younger. We, when you were younger, you went hunting when you were younger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My dad shot a kangaroo on top of this mountain, bro, and just dropped and rolled all the way down to the bottom. Wow. <laughs> I was fucking like ten or something. Like, That's the only <laughs> hunting Trauma, memory I have. Traumatized. Yeah. <laughs> kangaroo slowly falling on you. What's wrong with What's wrong with Joey? <laughs> Skippy no. It's, it's crazy. Skippy no. <laughs> Skippy. <laughs> Oh god, it's crazy because at those times I was like, I loved animals, like fooling your Steve yeah. Irvin and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. So like yeah, seeing that yeah. stuff, I was like, yeah, nah, I don't like Hunting's that. not for you. Nah, I could, I, I could do it, but it wouldn't be very. Uh, I don't know. I kind of, I like animals. Yeah. I want to be a bit of a hypocrite and go, yeah, I like animals, but I go shoot them on the weekends. Yeah, I don't, I don't like hurting them. I'm like, nah, not for me. Yeah, yeah. You see those people like Chinese and shit like what they do to oh it's nah. just Dude, you can buy you can buy you can buy barbecue rats on a skewer and it's normal yeah they've just gotten they've, like it, they're, they're eating animals because they can reproduce the animals what about it's that, effective that time animals. of year when they catch all the dogs or whatever they have that dog festival yeah, where they eat yeah, all the yeah. there's a place yeah. in Iceland or something they cook them alive and they have they're, harpoons yeah. for dolphins yeah, they harpoon. They get them there and they just go bam, bam. Like oh, they put it straight in their hole. Oh, have they you seen do that some, one? They do something intense. It's yeah, just, I've seen that one. It's yeah. fucking yeah, sick. Yeah, they're like grabbing and moving around while it's alive. It's, and they just well, bleed to death. Yeah, it's hard to watch. yeah, yeah. I'm I'm trying to be on the the good side of being a vegan, but I I like to think that I'm I want if I eat meat, I eat it as a luxury. But yeah, I won't. I don't have macas. I don't have KFC or anything like that. I'm just straight. If I can eat without animal based products, I will. But if I'm going to go have a nice dinner, I'll have one. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, like consumption yeah. is down and I'm not giving my money to, you know. I believe okay. if it's humane, like cows and stuff like that, and you kill it properly, like it's yeah. fine. But it, the it's way... It's not humane in those... In the, the way other yeah. countries do it, man, that's, that's sick. It wouldn't they, even be humane here, though. No. It wouldn't be humane here. Uh, There's no... Not, not the thing about Mac is how many Mac is there are. Yeah, it's true. A lot of, it's a lot of chaos. There's, yeah. no, there's no cost-effective, humane way to do it. Mm. Well, like KFC, like you have the one near... Where I live, um, Plumpton, when all the all the COVID stuff was like at its peak, ever they were getting a full oh, truck man. of chicken every single day. You should have seen the line like, the of KFC at Plumpton, man. Really? Oh my! It got that bad, eh? Half the car, half the car was blocked. Wow. Was, Do you remember what Plumpton Marketplace looks yeah, like? Yeah, yeah, I've been there recently. Dude, yeah. you know where the recycling thing? Yeah, yeah. The cars were like down there. All packed up. Were down towards there. All in line going to KFC drive through. Yeah. Fuck. And like I said, like, and you see the delivery truck almost every day. It's like, okay, if that's full of chicken, like, how much chicken are people consuming? Yeah, they breed them like no tomorrow too. Like, it's insane. Yeah. It's a bit much. It's just like, I like the taste. The meat tastes good, but it's yeah. just insane. Yeah, I, I love meat, bro. Yeah, it's nice. 
but I guess I've eaten a lot of vegan food that's quite nice though like yeah you can make yeah it's 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 decent I don't know it's hard because you see so many studies on vegan and then yeah. eating meat like and because I'm who's in- throwing the money into who though yeah you know what I mean yeah. like the meat industry is a billion dollars pharmaceuticals live off the meat industry they yeah. cause heart attacks and yeah. they, you know it's like it's like what do you, what do you believe? Have you seen that the one with Arnold Arnold Schwarzenegger at uh, on Netflix? The oh. and he's like he's not full vegan. He's like seventy percent vegan or something. Is that that big documentary that was going around yeah, on yeah. veganism? I watched yeah. that went vegan for like two days and I was like, no, yeah, dude, that that. There's, there's, <laughs> there's athletes that'll just be on a vegan diet and they perform way better. Yeah, because there's no there's no. Flesh, then animal flesh. But then I see studies of athletes that have gone yeah, carnival, carnival diet, diet and, and then yeah. they oh, perform. I'm their like, joints are better and everything. So it's like, know. what the fuck? What do you, what do you believe? It, if anything, weirdly enough, it seems like you're worse off being the omnivore. It's like, yeah. it's, like, it's like if you've got to pick, go full one side, full the other. Yeah, yeah. It's like I mean, being is weird because because humans by nature we we, like, we play it safe. That's why yeah. we live for so long. But like, it's like being in the middle. It's like the way they interact with each other in our bodies causes a lot more harm. Hmm. But at the same time, when people do say like the carnivore diet, most people that do it though do it by like say hunting their own meat. Like yeah, I mean, so maybe it's, it's like, like good, good, good clean, clean, yeah. quality clean, clean meat. Hunting. I don't think you could eat maccas every day. You know? No, no. no. I think yeah, this is I, good. I don't feel like maccas is really beef a lot of the time. Even like our ancestors didn't eat much meat, like unless they were good hunters. It'd be like a celebration if they caught a big pig or something yeah. like that. Most of the time it was berries, and and, mm. and they were at their peak. Yeah, you know, oh, you, yeah. why? Why is the you know heart disease kills more people than anything else? Exactly, millions, millions, and millions, and millions. And what's the and then the, the pharmaceutical companies will give them all like pills and pharmaceutical, yeah. bro. That that's Billion the biggest dollars. corrupt Billion. fucking company. Yeah. We can't, you can't make money off dead people. We can make money off them by keeping. That's why I don't go to the doctors and shit. I hate going. To I don't go to the doctors even now. They're don't fucking corrupt. I don't know I just feel you for pills and shit. Yeah. It's like, I got any virus now because I got like... Go for a run. That's why so many... Go for a run and like be happy or go for a So many kids have so many more like illnesses and shit like that because they're pumped full of fucking medication. They're not doing anything. They're staying inside. No vitamin D. Everyone's vitamin D deficient now apparently because no one goes out in the sun. No one goes like, do you have you surf? Do you go surfing? No, I don't know how to surf. Oh, dude. You go, if you're like, you're like into your fitness, man, surfing's yeah. for your back. It's the sea salt, the sun. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if your skin's okay with the sun, yeah, you'd be all right. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to learn how to surf. Surfing was great. When I was living towards the city, I was living with a few surfers and they were, they were mm. pretty good. They were, on, they, were, they were on Team Mom, actually. You could see them. Everyone thought we were a garage band. Because <laughs> <laughs> they were like, I don't know, there were no dreadlocks, but they were all long hair and they looked like surfers. So... That's good. So, what kind of diet do you stick with, Brody? Um, I'm more just trying to stay out of the whole preservatives kind of thing. Yeah. Because the, the way I see it is I'm not really vegan, not really meat, but yeah. I just try and, like, it's more the artificial stuff is what really causes all the problems. Like, meat's not bad for you if it's clean. Yeah. Just like a lot of vegan products aren't bad for you if it's clean. But the thing is, a lot of stuff can just say vegan and be really unhealthy for you as well. Like that um, fake ways. meat and shit like that. Like all the chemicals and that they'd have to put yeah, into they're make they're growing that. their own chicken nuggets from the cells of a chicken. Yeah, so how, I don't know how, what's the, like, I get it, there's chicken. no animal abuse or anything like that. How can that be healthy for you? Honestly, uh, if, it's, uh, if it's made in a lab, how can it be healthy? I don't understand. Uh, yeah, that's the hard one. I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a money grab, I reckon, too. A lot of it. You've got to you've got to just go with what your body wants, really. I just I mean, eat whatever I want, train hard. That's exactly right. Basically, I try my best. I don't want I don't want to support like Mac at the KFC. That's my only thing. So it's not yeah, I, I, I rarely eat that, and that's probably because we don't have really fast food up here. So I don't. Yeah, you're pretty lucky up here yeah. actually. You get so, like, good sun, good quality air. So like you. Macca's is Blackland. The next one's Lifco. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah Lifco's ages away. Yeah, ages away. So that's heaps good. That's that's what I'd rather be around. Not those like. Towards where we live, it's in where is it? We got Porto, then you've got Mac every few kilometers, then you've got Macca's, yeah, yeah. And then every like 500 meters. Yeah, it's crazy, and they pop up everywhere like no tomorrow, too. Yeah, and it's just so oversaturated with all the fast food, it's it's so hard to find a place where you can just get some nice food. That's why, and that's why 90% of the time, if you want to get healthy, you have to go to a supermarket, get all mm. the ingredients yourself, and make everything yourself. And this mm. society is lazy, <laughs> they yes. don't want that. Uber, Uber Eats Uber, Uber yeah. Eats man I'm like well, why didn't I think of that <laughs> <laughs> jeez yeah. 
it's, it, it's a good business, Maccas. And have you watched that documentary on Netflix? With the, the Maccas, the, the guy biz- that started it. Yeah. yeah. He was, he started so humbly and, you know, it's just corporate you now. Yeah. Isn't it's- it? Like, hey, like, there's nothing wrong with growing a business and everything like that. He's done great. He would have done great for himself. But it's just what happens after that. It's got to the point where they don't really care about the person. It's just food like and brands, that's killing yeah. them and shit. Like, it's, yeah, it's crazy times. Well, the amount of lawsuits, like, something, even a couple of, like, Maccas has had over health concerns. What was it? Because what, what was it the, the um, pickle? They use the pickle in a burger, otherwise it's considered a dessert because there's that much sugar in it. Yeah, it's still fast. Like legal, legally, they actually have to have it in there. If you get it without that, you'll get ordering a dessert. God. It's a burger. So what is your favourite dirty feed? Far out. What would mine be? I don't know. What would it? I don't know. What? Would, if, I, if I'm really going to go... If, I don't know. If I had a choice, probably a porto. Porto? Yeah, I love yeah. all porto. It'd probably be a porto. Do you eat Mad Max? Yeah, yeah, with sombreros. Fuck. Sombreros is yeah. better, I reckon. Oh, really? Yeah, I like sombreros, yeah. What are you, birds? Uh, I don't know if it's KFC. <laughs> KFC? Yeah, yeah. Dirty bird. <laughs> nah, but I, I, I limit I myself there. I've got a rule for me where I'm like, I can only have it once every two months. Yeah. Because that way, if I have it, at least I don't feel bad about eating it. And, like, I don't really eat macros. Like, I've, like if, over the last few years, if I have had macros, I have, the only thing I'll ever eat is nuggets. Mm. Which still isn't good for you, but no. like I can't no. eat, I can't eat their like their burgers. Like I tried, I remember I tried a quarter pounder. I think it was like last year sometime, and it actually made me feel sick. Their burgers are so have shit it for a while, you man. Realize, you're so you sick. how bad like and it's, we were trying to find a place like, to eat up here that was nice, and it's, I don't know where we don't know much up here. I, I had an ex girlfriend yeah. live up here. She was on the show as well. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. She's from up here, so but I thought I knew the area. I have no idea what's up here. There's not much up here. It's not oh, yeah. houses. Yeah, so there's a lot of food stuff at Springwood, the main yeah, street there, yeah. but other than that, not Enough really. Much, eh? no. You have to go back down towards the Hawkesbury. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like, there's a few, like, Chinese places, and burger places and that. Yeah. But there's there's a burger place up at Springwood, fucking dirtiest burgers. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're not, good or bad? What do you mean, ba- just greasy? Bad, bad for your body. Bad but for your body. They're, 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 not, they're, not, they're not bad, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been to the that the Penrith on the river where like teller balls and all yeah, that yeah bro that's, that's my favourite joint to go yeah I went there, oh, like, we went there the other day oh, not the other day. I went there like a week ago or so whatever mm. it was alright it was a bit oh, it's a bit sugary yeah, yeah. That, that's probably my cheat meal fucking yeah, teller there, balls yeah, yeah that's, I had the crepes pasta fettuccine thing oh yeah like, yeah no you barely hit a third of it no oh, boy, not a good idea no I, have you been to Lone Star that um Okay. Restaurant down there on the river? No, I don't think. Oh no, no. no. We went to the cafe down on the river. Okay, yeah. There's the excess that's down there near the Pan Walk. Yeah, yeah. And we've been there, and then we went to some other place. I don't know where that was. That was next to Tuller Bulls as well. Yeah. The cafe next to it. Oh yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the the Italian one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's where we went like to eat recently. I haven't been there yet because my missus went there once and she said there was shit service, so mm-hmm. we never went there. Mm. Well, we went to the Italian place had really good service because we went to Sat in the Sun and then John had, we had like Evie and all that yeah. stuff John's family and the owner actually came out and asked us if we wanted a place in the side because it was really hot and sunny and it was bad yeah it's getting yeah. hot now and, wow. and yeah he <laughs> took us inside made sure there was a spot for everyone to see it was very good service actually mm. yeah the Teleballs guy loves us because I go there with my Islander mates and they fucking eat oh, they a shit ton of food yeah. one time we went there it was like COVID so that everything had to be in the uh, cardboard like takeaway yeah. containers we had like fucking loaded up this high and he just gave they us free man. shit cause they, like, eat, they eat so much they're monsters man they're big boys <laughs> yeah they're big oh, boys they're good football players yeah. and that's why they gotta eat a lot exactly gotta feed that fucking body of theirs God, so what's happening with you these days, Brady? Gone gym or? Uh, yeah, so I actually had a month off because I actually had an injury on my hand, so I got a bit of a moment. I was going to say a wanker's cramp. <laughs> it's focusing on me, I think. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Fuck it, who cares? Yeah. It's mostly uh-huh. 40, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, and um, so I was on like a metre high step ladder and I was cutting some branches. And so we have two at my house. We have two at my house. The reason one that we brought for my dad to replace the old one. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, cause I didn't set up. My mom set it up and I didn't know it was the old one. So it broke while I was on it. It went down, handsaw, cuts. Ooh. Straight through the nail bed. I uh, part of my finger hanging off. I mentioned miss all the nerves though. 
um, missed the nail by like half a mil on that. You're lucky. My dad fucking cut like that much of his finger off. He put it in the wood chipper. Oh, no. He was trying to grab a branch out and he went too far. Cut the tip oh, of his finger off. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Was, oh. Like bone and everything. Yeah, you could yeah, see nah, all the bone. It was yeah. fucked. No, no. No, I like <laughs> that stuff. It, it came to know got like halfway through the finger. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And then... Yeah, so I had all that off. But, um... Yeah, now I'm looking into going back to uni by doing online for studying business and all that sort of stuff. See how that goes, because I've... I've applied to enroll off. I'll be informed soon, but their classes don't start in February. So, so you want to do business? Yeah. My brother was doing business. Honestly, the best way I would say to learn business is do business. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't reckon uni is the best for business. You don't. Yeah, you could learn on the field with yeah. that, but you've got to know. You know, it's sometimes not about what you know, it's who you know. Mm. It's all practical business. It like, is. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to know the theory behind it, but. You need to know how to imp- like put it yeah. in pl- spot. Well, that's why my intention was to do was because you can work full time because I yep. need to go to the uni to do the exams. That's it. Okay, yep. It's mm. full online. Um, and it's through UWS, so yep. it's not too bad. So the way I was thinking of doing it is, is I'm looking around, looking around for like new work now, like, but it's insane right now in through the hiring, hiring. Yeah, but I'm be. trying to find something I can do which can give me experience in that those sort of roles, then study as well, and I'll be I should be, I'll be able to do both. So in, in regards to business, like what kind of business you want? You want to do your own business or? Um, no, more like I just want I want to just get into those as well. See what it's, see what's like. See if it's for me because I've got I've got the mindset where you don't know if something, you know, if something's for you until you try. It. Exactly. Yeah. And I like I said I've tried I've tried trades I've tried retail I've tried warehousing I've even worked at, worked in manufacturing and that like one point I was working for General Mills and I was um, one of the um, makers of, of um, Ben Crocker yep. and I used to do all the I used to have the lab coat ball clipboard used to do all the chemical measurements and everything to make the meals and all sort of stuff and yeah just until I find a situation that I can enjoy myself or that I'm at least interested enough to invest time because the worst thing you can ever do is get a job that you absolutely hate and stick with it for the rest of your life yeah exactly and so many people do that eh? that's the mindset of the older generation yeah the older generation and I've yeah. never understood that because they've just chased so much of the money but, but with us no they want to be safe that's what it is ah, yeah, yeah that's, that's true and it's just like there's so much you can do where you can do what you enjoy and earn money but at the same time the best the best choices to make in life are the non-safe ones because hmm. you either lose pick yourself up because we hit the bottom of the only way is up and the good thing is we're in our 20s yeah, like exactly. we're young That's we can so, experience so much, so much shit and do whatever we want yeah still reach 30 and have plenty of life ahead exactly. of us and so many people change want. your career every single time you want man yeah. don't, if, you, yeah. if you want to change if you're not happy change don't exactly. don't drag along and get stuck like, keep going and yeah. that's, that's another issue that a lot of the old generation had is they would spend their 20s, 20s doing one job and then they, then they kind of understand why when they're like 35 they're trying to get a new job. No one wants to teach you when you're 35. Yeah. But if you're if you're under 30, they're willing to teach you because they know you at least have another three decades of hard work. Even so, man, I did a private investigating course. That's what I was doing a traineeship when I was yeah. in school, and there was a 65 year old guy there. He's like, I just want a career change. I'm bored. I'm just, yeah, nice. So I'm to be a private investigator. I'm thinking, fuck yeah, like he yeah. worked his whole life up to this point. And goes 65. No, oh, I'm going to be a private investigator. Like, you're never too late to just change your career exactly. and do something else. Like, do you guys listen to Gary Vee at all? Yeah, yeah. I share his stuff all the time, yeah. man. He's got great stuff. He's he talks amazing. about it all the time, bro. Fucking age is just a number, man. You're not yeah. too old to do anything. It's fucking He's mad. like, yeah, he says like 29 is young, man. You've mm. got nothing to worry about. He's like 29. in his 40s or something. He's fucking killing it. Yeah. And from where he started, like no one knew him five years ago. And now he's blown up. It's crazy. <sighs> So what's gym like for you? You've gone hard. Yeah. You went hard there for a stage, didn't you? I yeah. saw on your Instagram. Yeah, I went pretty hard. I went, I went pretty hard at one stage. I was, I, I, I was just really dedicated, and especially when I was traveling, the only thing I could do apart from work was gym. Yeah, I had no friends around, no anything. I was just working out every mm. single day for two hours, going crazy. But I was traveling. Yeah, it made it really hard. Mm. But I train, I train pretty hard. I, I enjoy the way it makes me feel. Yeah, and the way it makes me feel after the gym, like. It's a great feeling. And then I enjoy the benefits, which would be like, you know, you, you, you stay healthy, you stay fit. Yeah. That's the best thing. 
I'm all about, you know, having a healthy body. I don't, I don't want to, I let myself go sometimes though. Like everyone has a drink yeah. here and there, yeah. you know, so, but other than that, it's pretty it's, good. It's more so for the mind. Keep. It is. It's great for clarity, isn't yeah. it? As soon as you finish the gym, you're just like, wow, you know, you, 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 what you want to do is like right ahead of you, and you just got to think about how yeah, you get there. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Same as going for a hike, though. You got you in your mind, just thinking. Bro, the best was when I ran that marathon last weekend. Bro, my legs were killing me, mm. but my mind was so clear. Yeah, it was free, wasn't it? It, it was, was like free. It was, they call it runners high. Like I was yeah, okay. just fucking. I don't know what was happening, but it was fucking yeah. weird. It felt so good. It's all that because it releases happy hormones. It's healthy for you to get out. Yeah, the endorphins. The yeah, people don't do that. No, you know, it's like so people get their whole life and not realizing that you can just go for a walk and you feel better if you let mm. it. If you yeah. let it make you feel better. Yeah, that's why I like to start my day being active. Go to the gym and that. Yeah, start it the good way. Yeah, we try to go to the gym in the morning. Mm. Yeah. So, what are you guys' hobbies? Gym. 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 Hiking. We've gone for a few hikes we went to Palm Beach yeah we've done that we've done the uh, what's it called the Wentworth Falls hike yep we want to do a few more hikes um, yeah it's just about I suppose finding time right now we've got plenty of time it's just excuses really isn't it yeah exactly it's just you've always got time so you're not working at all at the moment just no nah, not at all no, I, I might be going back to work to do the 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 renewable energy stuff yeah but I don't know see what happens with studying and all that I don't know so what are you doing during your days is it boring it's well smo- I've, I had EV last weekend because it was Father's Day yeah. I've got EV this weekend um, other than that yeah just go to the gym uh, do a bit of research on the course and everything like that I, I've got to go into campus I think next week yep. do like another walkthrough and do like an open day yeah other than that it's just planning what I want to do next year because this year has been basically a throw out yeah it has you know, like, yeah, what else are you going to do this year? It's just it's been... It's, it's good in a way. Like, you can focus on yourself this year. Yeah, this year gave me a bit of clarity about what I want to do. Yeah. What makes me happy and how I can achieve being happier. And it was it was probably more beneficial for my mental health than it should have been. Yeah. I think I was better off with yeah. it happening and yeah. then me focusing, realizing what's clear. Yeah, so many people say the virus, like, the virus is bad, but mm. it's given a lot more people more time to yeah. focus on themselves which is what they need a bit more happiness to find yeah. out yeah. you spend more time with your family that'd be a big thing yeah, you, you spend more time you don't spend too much mm. but for those people that are, were working so much just to provide for their family they got to stay home for a bit yeah that probably made the world of a difference to them mm. what are your hobbies bro um so i do a lot of the fitness stuff with john as well yep um <laughs> But I'm also really into stuff like um, gaming, tech. Yeah, you're always like, into all that stuff. Like I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan for like phone, phones and stuff like that. Like I, I like to keep you up to date with the newest tech. You still play PlayStation or? Uh, no. So I'm I'm, I'm on Xbox. I'm also PC now. Oh, yeah. once, once you get there, you realize the whole master. <laughs> uh, so like, I'm also like enjoy the whole finding out what the whole comp- components part of like say PC building and stuff like that and how that. All that tech was, yeah, I remember seeing your thing where you had all your stuff stacked and then yeah. you clicked and then you've got... I had no clue what any of that stuff was, to be honest. <laughs> I got my missus brother to build it for me. <laughs> but yeah, um, I just I just enjoy, I enjoy trying new things, but I will admit one of my passions is technology. Yeah. I, But at the same time, I'm not really intelligent enough to be on the making side of it. I just enjoy seeing what's new, what comes out, seeing how new stuff works. Um, I just the way I see it, any new, most tech, most tech, not new technology is good technology. Yeah. Mm. It's just the only downside is, as the saying goes, the smart technology gets the dumber people will come mm. because people come because by because by nature we're becoming far more lazier. We're relying on technology. Oh, our brains are in our pockets. Like, like, yeah. Like like at least with our generation. Well, it was it was halfway through adolescence when technology. Yeah, it only just yeah, started. I think we're at a good point. We're, uh, yeah. we're at the best point where mid twenties right now are a pretty good point. Mm-hmm. But if you're the generation below us, you are in a bit of yeah. bit of trouble. Like, yeah, because mm-hmm. like the generation above us, a lot of people like my dad's a pro example, and, this, and I, I I I find this hilarious because he's like a mechanical engineer. Yeah, he can't use computer to save his life. He hates it. <laughs> Doesn't have an email. Makes he does everything by paper. He's hardcore. Old school, school fun. Yeah, yeah. like. You should see, he's one of those people where he gets a, he gets a phone out, glasses on. <laughs> oh, God. It's so funny. 
But and then but then you got the generation below us where you take a, you take a phone off them, you take the, the the computer off them, take the stuff. Off them. Oh, they have a meltdown. The, yeah. They, the, it's, it, My it's, daughter's there with the iPad, you, man. I take it off and that's it, that's it. Like. I've got no chance of calming her down unless I distract her really quickly. But if you take it off, she'll cry for a solid five minutes. There's, and there's no way I can't. There's no way to avoid that unless you've you know you can quickly switch it out with something else. You know. But the fact that you've got to do that. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? Because all I see is her looking on the iPad just like this. I'm it's thinking, not good oh, for the oh, eyes. Can't be good for. Oh eyes. no, that's terrible. Because no. what I found interesting was because one of the last things I studied before leaving psychology was addiction. And the effects of it on people. It does it trigger the same stuff as like so, cocaine so, and yeah, that. So so, mm. so so, things addictive tendencies are formed by pr- products that produce dopamine. Yeah. And because dopamine is generally the chemical that makes you enjoy stuff, it's it's, it's similar to serotonin, which is the chemical that makes you feel happy. Yeah. But with dopamine, it's more of a high. Like when you said you're doing your run, yep. you your dopamine would have shot through the roof, mm. and that makes you want to do it more. It's like it's like anything. It's the same with people, with people. But the thing is, what I find interesting is like dopamine affects everything. Yeah. Everything can create dopamine if you enjoy it. Just like you can be active and fit. Well, us going to the gym produces dopamine because your body's exhausted, but you get that high at the end, like yeah. pump and you enjoy it, you love it, you chase it. And it's the same technology. Te- the same with like kids and their technology. And the problem is, is like when you're little, you're meant to take a kid out. And they go play in a park with their friends. They, you know, they, remember when we were little, bro? We were always in the streets and shit. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like, I remember. I remember the idea of having fun when, when I was in, when, even when I was in high school, like mid mid high school. Every year, you skewed as your body. Yeah, remember that? We always we used to go to all the houses. You don't and see oh, that yeah. anymore, right? Eh? No, you don't see. You don't see the groups of kids riding bikes. No. And the no. amount of kilometers I racked up on my scooter in high school. Holy yeah. shit! Like, like, if you had friends and you and you went out with your friends. You, you could not be obese as a teenager. Yeah. Because you'd be riding bikes, running, walking, going into, the, like, I remember, was it, farm, was it Farmers? We used to go to? Where you oh. you'd run, you'd, where, um, off Frisher Road. Oh, yeah, we went there. The bush, yeah. You know? I think, yeah, we went one time and I think Cameron got caught on a, Fence, then the farmer came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I was there. Then I must have been there with you because I—that's where I was. That's where we all found out. Like the whole big group of us. Yeah. You know when Dean, yeah. Dean jumped in and then we found out yeah. there was a bull chasing him. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I remember yeah. all that. Yeah. Everyone used to. Um, yeah, everyone used to go there all the time. I remember one time we're running. You know, this path. There's just a massive cr- ditch crack yeah. in the middle. It was raining, and then we're like jumping from side to side, running in. Where you hear the farmer screaming. We're all running like we're. It's like we're about to get shot or something. He hears sirens and you just leg it every day for himself. You you think your life's over. It's all houses now there, eh? Yeah. Fuck, it's crazy how they've built it up. It's crazy. It's it's Stonecutter's Ridge or something like that now. Or Marsden or... uh. Yeah, um, but like that sort of stuff, you don't see it anymore. Kids don't get to experience and enjoy that stuff. Too much content on YouTube, man. There's too much to watch on YouTube. If you look at any kid in between the ages of, let's say... 10 and 15 hmm. what's the biggest thing that that biggest thing they experience Fortnite yeah like we, we had something similar yes we had we had COD but you didn't sit on it all day every day and, and you only really went on it to shoot your friends yeah yeah like to, like to, like to, like to play, with, play with friends and shit talk each other on the internet yeah. but you only ever did that night when you couldn't go out and hang out with your friends mm. But with them, they're just so... It's addictive. too easy now, isn't it? It's just yeah. too easy. Yeah. Like, yeah. And the negative stuff like Xbox now, where, where like, like, I do find it cool, but at the same time, like, you can now get your phone, connect, connect a controller to it, and essentially play an Xbox console on your phone. Anywhere. It's crazy. Like, it, it's... Technology is the best thing that happened, but also the also worst thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best thing that happened to us as a, as a people. But it's the worst thing that happened to us in terms of society. Makes your life easier, but that's not always a good thing. You need nah. a little bit of strain in your life yeah, yeah. to be a better, to grow into a, a strong person, yeah. you know? If everything's just given to you and handed to you, there's no, you don't hear many success stories nah. like that, do you? No. Nah. The best thing I love about it is being able to network. Yeah. That's helped me with my podcast, being able to network yeah. for all these people around the world as well. Communication yeah. is a good part. That's a yeah. good outcome of uh, the media and everything like that. It's everything that we get for phone calls, text messages, instantly messaging your mates, calling them whenever yeah. you want. And it, it only costing us whatever plan you have a month. Hmm. Nothing costs 15 cents to text anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the days we used to get charged. So easy. Just, just, you can just call whoever you want now. And just Get, get your $30 it. credit. Send me your location just, on Facebook right. and you're sweet to go. You're ready to yeah. go. Like, oh. The, the troubles that our kids have never got. 
They've got so. Remember how our parents used to say, "Oh, you got it so easy." Now we're going to say it to them. Yeah. <laughs> you got it so easy. Oh. Every generation says it. You've got cars near that drive themselves to oh, work, and bro. you can just chill and sleep in the back. <sighs> we're getting very lazy, aren't we? Yeah. But you get that. But you that point where no, where give another what like 10, 15 years, no one's gonna drive. Every no. every car's gonna be automated. You, you probably won't even. It'll, it'll become something like Netflix where you, it'll be a subscription or something. <laughs> you don't own the car. You just walk outside, push a button on the device. You've got like a PS six in the back. Just, <laughs> just rocks up. You've got your TVs and everything. You got put a fridge with food in it. Yeah. And you just sit in the back, and you probably find you to a point where you can sit in all four seats, but there'll be like normal seats because you don't need any equipment. Yeah. To drive. Or it could be like a, a little bu- a personal bus or something like, and just everyone just travels like that. That will become public transport. There'll be no private transport. It's kind of scary, eh? Thinking yeah, about that. Like, you if you're in trouble, they'll yeah, just yes, hack your they'll hack your car and say drive to police station. <laughs> they just drive you. To- <laughs> they probably would end up like that, yeah, eh? They'd be able to. They'd be able to. Re- the government will reroute and go yeah to the police station. <laughs> yeah. The government will have. Oh no, I broke you. That's all right. Oh no. <laughs> It's your souvenir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the government will have fucking control of everyone one day, I reckon. Oh, but that's what they're heading towards. That's what I think. Well, yeah. Well, well then that's, that's an interesting topic that um, a lot of people are talking about these days as well, is the whole how a lot of people are pushing in Western countries for the whole um, so like so the social side of it. Yeah. Mm. A lot of people don't realise that because so, we don't have a lot of much information on it, but... You look at a lot of the commun- when a lot of countries were communist back in the day. How did it all start? They yeah. Social social politics. Mm. And it. Everyone's a politician, yeah. Yeah, everyone has an opinion. Everyone, yeah. everyone knows. Everything. It's not a bad thing. It's just like you got to know who to listen to. You know. Yeah, and it also makes conversations far more toxic. Yeah. What politician is people? out to be? You know, for the people and for you know moving forward in the future, not just out for the one percent. Exactly. It's you know, very hard. You know, yeah. You know, unless you're friends with them, and then you you know. You then just, even so, you can't trust them sometimes. Even yeah, exactly. Especially yeah. when they get to that position, it's like fuck. Yeah. They're trying to talk shit to get higher up. You know. Ooh. Dirty game. Yep. Yeah. Have you done research on those blue light lenses? Yeah, uh, yeah, I've looked into I've looked into those because I was actually debating it because that was what one of the issues that was actually what caused me to one of the things that helped me wear glasses was the effects of blue light, and um, I haven't tried the glasses myself. Yeah, but I've debated getting a pair. The only thing, and my problem is because I wear prescription lenses. Yeah. Is, it's going to be far more expensive than just buying them normally. Yeah. But but they've started doing a lot of things in phones, TVs now, where you can actually activate a blue light filter on the screen. Oh really? Like like you like they have like, that warm color on the other. Oh, yeah yeah. Yeah, like, but, yeah, 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 like honestly, yeah. Yeah, but like they actually have like a blue like a blue light filter thing where you click it yeah and it just removes all the blue light. And it's not too bad, but if you're reading like it's interesting because you're reading like say something on a white screen like on say it's, you're using Instagram or Facebook or something for example. You activate it, and the color of the white background more resembles when we used to look at old books, yeah, the pages, which I found I found interesting. But is that like a uh, like a warm color makes you feel yeah. like you're going to sleep, like, like well, a, yeah, it helps you go to sleep. But then that blue that's coming out of yeah. your eyes because these days everyone's on their phone for the better everyone's got something on. Yeah, you can see if you spend a lot of time on your phone and you spend like a good half an hour, you have the bags under your eyes. Oh yeah, like I'm 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 real bad for that. <laughs> yeah, but like the, even if you don't have them, like like all the time you get them temporarily because you've looked at your phone for yeah. so your eyes are being strained it, it, gives, it gives you the effect of you're not um, sleep, sleeping yeah it's just right. watching a screen for too long it's just not what we're meant to do obviously no. the problem is that's what everyone does whether you like it or not like, like Nick, you might like you might almost never use your phone but because you, because you got an editor on the computer you get the same effect yeah, yeah. so I guarantee you spend hours editing yeah I do editing's, yeah. editing's the worst thing it's most of all, one of the most rewarding but one of the worst yeah if you do a lot of editing those glasses would probably really help you yeah I'll probably might stop get a you bit. from being up so late at night or if you suffer from mm. something or anything like that I'm usually not too bad with that I put the because it has a night mode on there too oh, okay. where it puts the warm light or whatever yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's basically what, what, what so I, I have that on there at night time and like, as soon as I go to bed I crash yeah. man yeah to be, to be honest I wouldn't really if you're busy and you're working yeah yeah that's great that's what you want Yes. You want to be busy. You're lucky to be busy, really. Yeah. Like, it's good to be always doing something. Mm. Mm. Yeah. To be honest, I wouldn't really invest getting a pair, in my opinion. Yeah. Because from what I looked into, because like, I was very curious, so I, I did a lot of research on it. But there's no definitive proof that blue light is what causes all the issues. It, if, if you, like, the way I see it, I feel like it's probably more 
just a contributing factor. Yeah. Mm. Like, if, fair enough, eliminating blue light would help your eyes a great deal, but there's no point buying like a six hundred dollar pair of glasses. I guess it's just it. like what, what technology can it, eliminate blue light filters anyway. It's mm. just yeah, it's it's just a form of like mitigating the effects. Yeah. Maybe the best way to do it is to eliminate yeah. it in general. Just get off. Or do off do we had that thing where um as I know I use Joe Rogan a lot, but yeah, you so big. Yeah, <laughs> everyone knows it's an example. But where they did the um challenge where they tried to go was a month without using a phone or if they had to use a phone they had to use like a old school like Nokia looking thing so the oh, screen okay. was just black and white <laughs> well, it was okay. so bad and they had to do it like a month and it was fun. it was funny because I think Joe, I think Joe Rogan did it and then, and then that's when he went like off his like social media pages because he even said that because that's another big contributing factor with a lot of issues as well social media mm. yeah he'll get away he'll be, he must be around it so much that he when he does go out and go hunting that's how he gets away yeah when he, he goes out to the zones out for go down to the I hope like whatever wherever yeah. he goes that's what I've found like starting this podcast is yeah, I've gone so much more on social media because yeah. I'm trying to network, promote it yeah. and network and stuff like that yeah. so that's why this weekend going away to the farm fucking just shut off from that yeah that's that's yes, great mm. it's great to have that I wish I had a farm, <laughs> farm. <laughs> yeah would be nice yeah so you should do tech reviews by the looks of it you fucking research a lot of stuff yeah I, I, I do I watch a lot of YouTube I read I read a lot of reports and stuff like that like I, I think is I've debated doing that. Like, at one time I was debating making my own tech YouTube channel. Why not, bro? You could. You got I the mean, time. I mean, I mean, ironically enough, thanks to this help, I'm um, starting up with the um, podcast I'll have with um, my podcast vlog. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. With, uh, with John all that. You got something in the I, editing now. I'm yeah. editing that. I've, I pay for editing software so I'll use it. And I, I'm, funnily enough, you can actually record pretty good with the editing you can just do on the, um, like my phone, for example. Mm. Like the, 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 um, 10 no 10 plus yeah yeah and the camera i can record in 4k 4k 60 mm. yeah i use my phone now the iphone 11 for a lot of my vlogging stuff oh yeah, yeah. it's yeah. so much easier but the thing is like yeah. with, with the right light with the right lighting and stuff you can actually you could start a youtube channel on a phone and most people can't tell the difference because you because youtube is a good example most videos are downscaled in 1080p yeah mm. so you, no one's going to notice if you're Using a, a crappy camera, and you can use some. You can use a, a great camera from four years ago, and you use a modern day smartphone. Modern day smartphones are five times better. Mm. But yeah. at, at the end of the day, it's not about the quality. Like it's what you're saying, it's, like the yeah, content, the content, the passion behind it. Yeah. Yeah. The only, the only, but the only problem with say like the tech wise is you would have to purchase a lot of like yeah. tech to review and stuff but then once you get big the tech companies just start sending you shit yeah that's true and then you then you gotta deal with the then you gotta deal with the hard thing about the tech industry which is every 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 no name under the sun wants to send you something and you and then you gotta go through what's what's actually worth putting on mm. the internet what is worth advising people on as well yeah, so, yeah but the good thing it doesn't sound too bad it's your youtube stuff, channel man. you get yeah. to choose what the fuck you say what's good and what's bad yeah. you know, who knows i might go home and record record something tonight and see, see how that you should bro like if, if it's something you're passionate about and it's your hobby do it yeah we, we I, talked I, about I, it before people doing their passions and being happy yeah. in life may as well fucking do it with all the try. time you, with yeah. all the time you got yeah that's true that's true so there you go give You've, me your best shot i expect to see some youtube videos right? <laughs> why not I'll give it a go. See how it goes. I'll give you a little, give you a little you can just camera. You <laughs> borrow, my, <laughs> borrow my camera and just start vlogging if you want as well. Mm. It's up to you. you, if, you got a, if your YouTube channel blows up, well, if you've got a thousand subscribers, that's great. Like mm. That's that's a thousand people well, you get well, to reach out to. Once you get a thousand subscribers on YouTube, you can actually start getting ad revenue. Yeah. Wow, well, there you go. That's a good number then. Mm. See, the way I see it is just, even if I impact one person, I don't care, bro. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's about imp- making an impact. It's not about all the likes and stuff. So many yeah. people get caught up in that, especially with Instagram. Oh. It's about, oh, I've got all these likes and shit. Like, yeah, I've, I've, I've never really like. You've got to be thankful for every single subscriber. Like, yeah. Like they're going out of their way to like, you know, support mm. what you want to do. Yeah, exactly. It's fantastic. When people get to a certain size, it's just like, it's, it's, hard, so to many, it's yeah. hard to control. Well, even if like, you can be a genuine person on stuff like YouTube, Instagram, any kind of social media. Once you get to a certain size, you can't thank every individual person. Yeah, it's, it's impossible. Hard. Like, mm. like P- P- PewDiePie, he's got he's got he's got over a hundred hundred million subscribers. That's almost a third. That's that's, that's over. A th- he's got over a third of the Amer- people living in America. Yeah, subscribed to on, you, uh, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. It's mental. 
yeah. that's a lot. You can't. And, and the next closest person, that's actual person or company like T Series, is is uh, they're in like twenty something million. It's mm-hmm. like no one's going to ever get up to that point. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. But you see Gary Vee, he gets a lot, like, gets back to a lot of people too, like. Yeah, he writes on his Instagram, he writes on everything, man. Yeah, he just stops in the street and talks to you. Yeah, he's crazy, like, he's always on his phone, like, getting That's back That's the good thing about the America is that there's so much over there. So yeah. much, con- there's so much you can get going over there. It's especially five million people. Yeah, he's busy, like, life, bro, he's just yeah. cameraman following him around, fucking, and gets so much content from that. There's in the lifestyle over there in America, if you big, man, like, that's a lot of people that you've got to, you know, yeah. you can reach out to compared to Australia, which is obviously a lot smaller. Mm. Like even sports people over there, like yeah, huge. And there's no huge. salary cap over no, there. No, I mean, the money they get, throw them. It's fucking crazy, man. They have got such a small salary cap for a whole team here compared to <laughs> yeah. compared to over there, man. They'll pay them a hundred million over ten years here. It's like the salary cap's like five million. Or yeah, million. yeah, some small. Depending on what the club is, I think. Yeah. 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 And then there's like third party deals and shit like sponsors, sponsors and yeah. that. Yeah, of yeah. course. But yeah, over there, like NBA and shit, there's. Oh man, they just stay <laughs> just. They get paid so much so money much. over there. It's crazy. Even like, say, a player that gets drafted and doesn't even play, like, yeah. they get paid yeah. more than like an NRL player, a top yeah. one. Like, it's yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah, that's one good thing about America, that you've got so much to, you know, there's so much to do with it, so many opportunities, really. But at the same time, the process of getting into those opportunities would be a Oh, yeah. It's f- once you're in, you're in, but you've got to yeah. get in first. You've got to get it's into the car. It's hard. Like, and it does set you up for life if you yeah. use your money wisely. Like, mm-hmm. you do see players that, not so much money, they just throw it away. You've got to concentrate on doing what you love, though, not the money. That's yeah. the thing. A lot, of them, a lot of them forget. Most of them, when they retire from sports, they're probably going to do something else. No. Probably not. So like you, you'd be smarter to just into, just put the money aside and enjoy it once you retire mm. and just focus on enjoying your, t- your time at, at the moment. Yeah, but then we're seeing, I'm seeing a lot of players, like NRL players, using their leverage of being a professional sports person to do other stuff. Mm. So like uh, Sandor Earl and some of the Melbourne boys, they're into sports cards and shit, so they have their own sports card business. Oh, that's cool, yeah. There's a Brisbane player. He has his like own media company. Yeah, and um, they can advertise on their Instagram. Yeah. So it's like, it's so... It's, and it, it grows the game too because it's their personal brand, so yeah. people following them and it's building them. It's it's crazy. It's that's good. right. They're investing in themselves, which yeah. is exactly what they should be. So when they're... Like, Caelan Pong is doing it as well. He's doing like vlogs and podcasts and that too. Yeah. So he's already on the big bucks. Imagine what he's going to be like when he finishes with yeah. all the other avenues that he has. Because that's what all the NBA players do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I don't watch NBA, but I know the fucking LeBron James and all that stuff. I've never watched yeah. a game, man. Their I've never watched brand. a game. <laughs> Their personal brand. That's all it is. Yeah. It's crazy. So what's next for you guys? What are you um, looking to do? Any goals for the next few years? or? Man, next year would be just... I reckon next year would be a big learning curve for me. Yeah. I reckon just, just go do my studying and uh, learn as many skills as I can in the acting gig, whatever. Just do my best. I mean, I, I want to do it because I know that I would love to do it. And yeah. it'd be great. And, you know, I've got... I've, de- I've decided to dedicate myself to this. That's you know good, what man. I mean? So that's what I want to do. I don't want to, I don't want to be working, you know, like 60 hours when I'm... 50 and all that stuff I want to be you know what I mean yeah. I want to be doing what I want to do be comfortable and be able to spend time yeah. with my daughter and that, like, kids like and I'll quote Gary V again because I yeah. fucking love the guy but he, have you heard him talk about when he goes into a nursing home and you can just see the, the regret in their eyes like oh, the old people's man, eyes because yeah. they haven't lived their life to their full p- potential yeah it's sad yeah I don't, I don't want to be like that. Nah. Like, I want to. I want to be just so. Con- I just want to be content and happy. But I also want to be like you know. I, I want to be humble and giving. Yeah. You know, I want well, to- life's too short to yeah, be. It is. Unhappy. To be an asshole as well. Yeah. Just be nice to everyone you meet. Eh? Just mm. you never know that that person could change your life. Yeah. You just never know who mm. you who you're gonna meet. Yeah. So. What's next for you, bros? Well, I'll be honest. Um, COVID. Um, one thing that's done with me is made me realize because I've never been out of the country. Yeah, and it made me realize I really want to travel. I want yeah. to see different places. Like I enjoy learning about cultures. Like I've I've looked into a lot of like different Asian cultures, um, European cultures, and stuff like that. Um, I want to you know go to places like you wanted to go to Japan. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, bro, that yeah. looks beautiful yeah, there. Yeah, Japan would be awful. Great. It's funny. It's it's, it's funny because whenever you mention Japan to someone, it's because that stigma. We go, oh, anime. 
Oh, nerds. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I love them going, do you, do, you, do you just realize how rich in culture Japan is? Yeah. I think about the food and the trains. Oh, dude, there's the one trains. Thing. There's, yeah. No, no, you know, my, <laughs> one, the biggest thing I want to experience there? They're hot springs. There's hot springs right near the base of Mount Fuji, where it's yeah. an outdoor hot spring. And you sit, you just sit in a nice hot spring and you just look at Mount Fuji and you're sitting in the snow. Yeah. But you're just nice. Yeah, I heard the skiing and that's good there too. Yeah, man, my mate of mine I used to live with, he went skiing in Japan and he said it was great. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, what about you? What is, what's your plans? Man, oh, so I wanted to go to New Zealand this year. Mm. But I think I want to do it next year. I want to start at the top and go all the way to the bottom. So hire like an RV or some shit. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I just want to do a lot of traveling. Like, I've done podcasts with all these guys who've, um, traveled heaps around the world mm. if you would have seen like um, the, what? The, 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 the uh, Disney or something is it um, what's his, his Instagram it handles like Disney or something like that. I'm having him on tomorrow oh okay yeah. but there's a guy I did with um, Chaz Powell and also Justin True they've um They've walked like some of the largest rivers in Africa and shit. Yeah, that they've was... been abducted by like what? military and stuff like that. Bro, wow. he talks about it all in the podcast where you should listen to it. And it talking to these people and all the places and shit they've done, it's mm. just like holy shit. There's a whole world out there like I haven't yeah. discovered yet. I want to go out there and travel as much as I can and open my eyes up. Mm. Different cultures, different ways of life. It's crazy. So I want to do a lot more travel, man. Just Build the podcast, vlogs. Yeah. It's doing what I love, basically. That's right. That you can hope for. Exactly. Traveling would be amazing, though. Like, yeah. I want to travel the world. I don't want to do the touristy stuff. Nah, but fuck I want to go shit. straight into, like... Oh. If I could walk... I'd love to do the the Amazon walk. Oh, yeah. You know that famous Amazon walk? Well, I think... I don't know if Bear Grylls or Zach from one of them did yeah. it or something. Or uh, David Beckham, he rode a motorcycle through the Amazon, I think, in Brazil. Okay. And that was that. Would, imagine doing that. Imagine yeah. riding, getting on a Harley and riding through Brazil. Yeah. Like the guy I did podcast with, he lives in his van. He got like a mag kitted out van, yeah, yeah. and he just drives around because he's in uh, like England, UK. Yeah. So he just drives around there, going all different spots, just like, living life. Yeah, so close to Europe, the UK too. They're so lucky. It's We're like so that, far away from everything. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, you know what I mean. You can't. Like possibly. the other week, he was in Scotland, and now he's in like England, and yeah. he just gets to go wherever he wants. It's like wow. You could drive for eight hours and be in the same state. Yeah. You know, we can't... We've, yeah. we've got one, like... It's multicultural here, but it's Australia. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas there, you... There, you just... Half an hour, you're in another country. The full-on culture. Go from yeah. France to Germany to Russia. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you could do that whole... Yeah. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Like, I'd love to do that shit, man. Travel's number one on my bucket list. Yeah. It makes you... Definitely would humble you. Make mm. you a better person. Make you appreciate the world, too. Yeah. Yeah. Especially talking to people like they're so wise. Like once you travel, oh, like it yeah. really opens your eyes up. And yeah, it's awesome. Well, well, I guess we'll finish off with my two questions that I always ask. I'll start with you. Um, when your time's up on this earth, what would you like to be remembered for? Wow. Okay. I think I just like to be. I'm not so concerned about other people's opinion. That's my yeah. thing. I'd love to just be remembered for being just a great person I, I don't know like I haven't really thought about that eh? yeah. that's an on the spot question that's what I love asking yeah. her yeah. I don't know I, I just, just want to be the best that I can be and I've never really thought about that I'm not thinking about what I'm, what I'm going to leave behind I just want to be the best version that I can be best yeah. father yeah the best father the best person just whatever a job I have I want to do as the best I can at it I want to excel in it I want to you know what I mean like yeah that's a good question, Nick. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and my last one is, what's your definition of success? Oh, happiness. Yeah. No, straight up, just happiness, yeah. yeah. Just doing whatever you want to do and not, don't give a fuck about what anyone else says. Yeah. If they say, you know, you should be happy, don't worry about them. If this makes you happy, just do it. Yeah. That's success. Success is having a, just, yeah, being yourself. Yeah. Don't pretend to be anybody else. Yeah. Broge, you can't copy him. Yeah, I know. I was doing something like, yeah, so. <laughs> um, no, nah, so... If I think that could be remembered by, um, if I was to really put into it, maybe I'd like to be known for just inve investing into something that changes something. Yeah. To know that I had a part in something that has improved a lot of things. I, I, so it's less about personal being known, but more just me knowing at least that when I've gone, I've at least been a part of something that's worth something, if, yeah. if, if you know what I mean. Um, what, was, what was the second question again? What's your definition of success? Uh, definition of success. Uh, 
definition of success for me is well you basically you'd be successful if you invest in your own passions yeah whether whether someone wants to be a server go be a server if you want if you want to be a pro video gamer go be a pro video mm. gamer you want to do a podcast do a podcast mm. just you're successful when you when you're dealing with the, both the positives and negatives of what you truly want to do yeah like so many people like so many people believe they're successful because they're earning six seven digits being a mindless serving in a super corporation yeah the yeah. problem is though everyone joins and joins and is part of these corporations they just become, become so powerful it doesn't matter where yeah. everyone's doing their own things like we're in a day and age where everyone can everyone I'm saying to all of you as well <laughs> everyone can invest, invest in what you want to do you can be an individual and succeed in whatever you want to do so that's why I say go for it give it a shot you fail the only place you can go is up Exactly. You know what I would like to be remembered for? Having an impact on the environment. Yeah. And that'd be something because... In what way? It, it, like climate change. Yep. Anything to do with just make just leaving the earth better than what I came into. You know what I mean? Just trying yeah. to make it... Doing my part to make it better. See, I want to do a lot of conservation stuff with the wildlife. See, that's great. That's what yeah. I mean. Just anything to do with the environment, nature, the earth in general. Mm. It's sad because... Um, especially in the Africa, like the elephants, the rhinos, oh, man, like yeah. they're not going to be around when your daughter grows up and wants yeah. to travel. Where is she going to go? She's never going to know what an elephant is. Be like a dinosaur. She have to go to the zoo. Yeah, like Australia, the Great Barrier Reef. That ain't going to be oh. around for much longer. Like one of the benefits I, I do admit from the whole COVID situation is a lot of the air and a lot of environment, a lot of places. How quickly is a lot of those places bounce back? It shows you if we if we just didn't. Like, if we were just gone, within a year or two of us gone completely, the planet would just be back to where it yeah, was. We can't live without the Earth, but the Earth can it, fucking yes. show us how to live no, without it, us. It shows, but it shows you how much damage do we do. Exactly. The host if, kills the virus, or the virus kills the host. Mm. And Literally. And we're the virus. Oh, yeah. yeah, unfortunately. Yes. Coronavirus, bro. You reckon that was, like, man-made? I have a theory. Coronavirus that, has been around for ages. Yeah, like, I, know there, I know there was the animal... But yeah. part of it, yeah. but it's I don't know. I reckon it's probably manipulated because it's so close to virology in Wuhan or the, the Yeah, I feel like it was made to kill a lot of the older generation. Yes. I, doing I, a good I, job. It's yeah. Doing, it's doing a pretty good job. My mum's in aged care and she has to be so Yeah. She's aged care nurse, she has to be so like vigilant with all this stuff. Like it's crazy. Mm. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's the same it's the same because a lot of like in, in Australia there's a prime example. We're we're affected but we're barely affected compared no. to a lot of other places. Like like was it Italy as a prime example yeah mm. ravaged but you look older places, generation the older generation just wiped yeah but at the, at the same at the same time though like I feel like it, it, it is, I feel it was a natural virus but they might have been working on maybe some way to counteract a, one virus at Wuhan yeah and, it, and then they've just had a breach and it's just did you know anyone that had the virus no you don't know anyone have any of you been tested I've been tested so many times. I, yeah. I went to the doctor and get tested. I only got tested once. I got tested, bro. It's terrible. Fucking bitch shoved it down my throat. Oh, yeah. I hated it. I've been tested five times. Five? Because yeah. he works in Coles. Oh, and yeah. not just that. When I went to the hospital, when I was meant to get my surgery, oh, you already five, got minutes, one. five minutes from my surgery, I'd been there from six in the morning. It was, almost, it was like seven, eight o'clock at night. You should find someone and get them on the show test. that had it. Yeah. And then talk to them about their symptoms and everything. Because like, that, everyone would be different. Yeah. You know what I mean? It'd be... It'd be a different one. Yeah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> Fuck. That's it. So, thank you. New content. <laughs> More content. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll probably wrap it up here. We could probably talk for hours about random oh. shit, but yeah. Yeah, it's been, what, about an hour and 52 minutes, so... Not too bad. Damn. Yeah. That's a really... <laughs> yeah. Wow. Nice. We'll probably go for like four hours, but you know what? What's we're your longest so far? Two, two and a half. Two and a half. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, we'll wrap it up here, guys. Um, thank you guys for listening. Um, thank you guys for coming on. No worries. We'll definitely we'll definitely have to catch up and do some hikes and that soon. Oh, yeah, we gotta go. We gotta go on a hike, man. Yeah, 100%. for sure, bro. It'd be you awesome. See, you can see how weirdly, weirdly, I'm, I'm fit in the gym, but I'm very unfit when it comes to the fit. That's all right, man. We'll get you fit. That's what I mean. Yeah. We're taking him on a hike, and by the time he's done, we'll, yeah, he'll yeah, be fine. I right, but I enjoy it. That's the thing. I love the I love, right. the, I love the struggle of it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's beautiful and the scenery. The and nature. Because yeah, the thing about a hike is, it's not it's not like most things in life. 
you're halfway through a hike, you, got, you have to finish it. Yeah. It might take longer. You can turn around if you want, but you just got to do the exact same thing over again. Exactly. Yeah. So, if, if, which gives you the mindset, you're like, you might as well just, because if you turn around, everyone else is going to keep going. Yeah. You might as well go with everyone you, else. You've come this far, you might as well yeah, just keep fucking exactly. going. And, that's, and to me, that's that's just, that's a step people should put, pursue in life. Yeah, that, that shows you're mental half, toughness. You're halfway at a point. Anyone can turn back and quit. Yeah. You, you push through. Yeah. You've got to get somewhere. Yeah, that was like my marathon. So it was a 1.4 kilometer um, black lap mm. and our cars were right there anytime I could have stopped and hopped my car and left then you keep going but I didn't want to be a bitch because all the other boys were doing it and I wasn't going to quit fuck that so yeah. even though I couldn't walk after was that I, when you had the headlamp yeah the headlamp yes. yeah uh, yeah yeah is it Glenbrook yeah Glenbrook Glen- Glen- it's a yeah. lagoon yeah wow okay well, we should probably do that is it good it was, we did it at night time oh, that's yeah, the only time we've been that, there yeah. mm. we could do that when we're four ones again yeah, haven't done I haven't done that. Yeah, we'll yeah. Do, yeah, definitely do that. It's good. And we'll go to Mini Haha Falls if you haven't been there before. I haven't been. Where is yeah. it? Where's Mini Haha? So it's uh, it's Katoomba. Okay. And oh, you go down cool. and it's full like you can swim in there and everything. Yeah, we should go then. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Last time I went there, there was Summer a um Katoomba. a tourist. She wanted to a uh, European tourist. Yeah. She didn't believe in wearing tops. Okay. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, nice. So, yeah, yeah, love, yeah love, love that. Good, good view good for the belief boys. system, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> in tops. Yeah, neither do I. She wanted a full, <laughs> full tan. So good, good luck to her. Wow. But yeah, nice, very nice. I guess we should wrap it up finally yes. this time yes. instead yeah. of rambling on. Yeah. <laughs> right. Otherwise, we're gonna keep going. Keep all right, going. thanks, lads. No worries at all. Yeah.